Well, what's happening? Happy holidays, everybody. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Super excited about today's show. Let's get right down to it. My co-host today from Madball, you might know him from Hazen Street, and of course you know him from the Smoking Word Podcast, Mr. Hoyer Rock. Brother. You left out Chippendales, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Like I was telling you before, Merry Christmas, Happy Chanuka, Manika, and all that other shit. Hey, yo, happy Boxing Day, bro. Yo, shout out to every, all my boxers out there. But we learned, we just found out that Boxing Day ain't about uh, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> what the fuck's Boxing Day, bro? Anybody, anybody out there know a little bit about Boxing Day? Let let us know. Like, what the fuck? I, boxing yeah. Day turns out is like when you, it's like you box up gifts. Yeah, you box up gifts. It's the same thing. Uh, forget it. Long story. The English. <laughs> shout out to Knuckle Dust, by the way. Shout out to <laughs> for the business and everybody out there. Yeah. The, uh, oh, it's Canadian, right? It's well, it's Canadian. It's yeah. If you ask the, the English, is English. You ask the Canadians, Canadians, whatever. CasaTheRock.com. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Perhaps it's Boxing Day, and you're looking for it, it, you got something to box. Let's go. Hold on, I got uh, I got Roger Moret texting me. Let, let me oh. see. Maybe we could get him on the show. Let's see. Hold let's on. see. Let's see if Sandy, like a Stigma would say, Sandy Claus is real. Yo, yeah. listen, everybody. I'm glad we finally got to do this. Me and Drew been talking about doing this. And I said, yeah, you know, he actually told me, let's do this shit for the end of the year. And I said, this is a good way to end of the year with, with family since we can't be all around the little campfire eating my marshmallows or whatever you people do. Uh, crisping tofu or whatever. Let me ask you, vegans are are marshmallows still allowed? Or <laughs> not, no, no, is yeah. It, I don't know. Is there dairy products in marshmallows? I don't know. I don't know. I'm asking for a friend. I'm asking for. I don't a think there's any dairy products in Oreos or anything anymore. You know. No, no. Oreos are vegan. I think. Yeah. You know. Shout out to all my grass eaters out there, my vegans, man, for real. Shout out to you guys too. Wow, the world has changed, right? Yeah, yeah, it got uglier. <laughs> no, but yeah, no, it got greener and uglier. But uh, no, but definitely, um, I want to definitely. Lately, I've been having a shout out to organic fucking grill always. Shout out to fucking uh, everybody, all everybody organic. You know what I mean? I'm in. <laughs> um, there are vegan marshmallows. Gina says. Oh shit! There you go. Oh, here you go. Boxing Day is when which servants, tradespeople, and the poor traditionally were presented with gifts. Damn, they the, 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 they had the trade. I'm still learning about this tradespeople and these all these yeah. um what do you call it um uh, non binaries and whatever is yeah. that the yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> how, how you boys doing, bro? They're good. They're good. Thank God, my boys are good. That's the main thing. They had a good Christmas and um. Good. They were mad happy, so they're happy. I'm happy, and um, and just getting ready for next year. You know, it's a, you know, it's always the Christmas always marks off once you you pass that. It's like okay, the sure. finish line for the year, and then it's like uh, okay, now what do we do? Uh, your boy, your boy, monster will be ripping it up on stage soon. Are you playing? Are you playing with Powerhouse? Oh yeah, yeah, we have a, a couple of shows with Powerhouse at the end of um January in um Pennsylvania, and I think. Uh, upstate New York. I feel, you know, I'm, I'm I'm a little confused on what's why. I usually look on Instagram to see where I'm playing, and um, but I know we got some stuff, and I just literally saw that we were playing some shows, I guess, in Cleveland. So, yo, go go Cleveland. <laughs> why not? <laughs> hey, let's do. Uh, what's going on with this guy right here? What's up, man? What's up? Yes. Happy holidays, Merry yeah. Christmas, Oya. Oh, yeah. What's up? The man behind the fucking. <laughs> Is, that, is that a is that a Chacho's Tacos hat? It is. It is. God bless them. They Word, found me a hat big enough for my head. Monogamy. Love these guys. What's that book I saw you had? Show us that book. Ah, well, I'm working on a little something. This is a prototype of what I think is one of the most historic days in hardcore. Look at that. Right here. Whatever it is, I'm in. Not only are you in, but you're in it. I mean... The uh, let me find a good shot here. This was such a day, and here you go. Look at this guy right here. Here we go. 
Boom. Hey, everybody, I I demand that you go out and buy this book now. But listen, <laughs> that's a dope pop, by the way. I'm doing some Pavarotti shit. Oh, so, yeah, singing like a bird. This was this was a kind of day, I mean, you know. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's the that says it all right there. <laughs> that says it all right there. What I want to do is I want to go around to all of the musicians and the people that was there and get everybody to throw me that give their two cents on what they saw and what they felt and and I want to make that book happen. I, it's kind of something I've been thinking about since the, since before it happened. You're but I think this is a, just a beautiful it's day. With to make it, you're gonna make it happen. That's 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 great right there. You I'll know. buy I'll buy you out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was something though, and I'm I'm hey, six listen, days I know, in. I know about these books, bro. I yeah, just, I, I just did one, bro. See that? So we, we got to talk, you and me. Yeah. I if it got gotta... pictures, I'm in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, let's do uh, let's do photo of the day. Yes. And uh, listen. I think it's I think it's no secret. Uh, if you don't know who this dude is, I think you're living on another planet. But <laughs> yes. here we Unplug go. Unplug your computer let, let, now. Let's let's chop it up. Photo of the day. There you go. A bass player, right? Oh yes, yeah. Is. Does anybody out there know who this is? <laughs> there you go. Uh, Drum roll, please. <laughs> Yo, know, gotta shout out Richie. Gotta shout out Richie Crutch right now. Richie, bro. Rich. Oh, let me. Oh, I'm gonna check out these um, um comments. I'm fucking. It's... Yeah, what are ah. you doing, bro? Look, your boy Eric. Look, there's your boy Eric on there. Oh, let's you know? get this room cracking. I'm learning this. I'm new to this side. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, come on. I'm all right. Listen, everybody. Let's get this cracking. But I, that's okay. it... listen, since like I said, we couldn't be all around the freaking Chinooka tree or whatever it is we guys could do to celebrate. <laughs> This is it right now. So this is it. Oh, listen, what else are you going to do? We got Wi-Fi. You motherfuckers got an hour or two to kill. You all right. Trust me. Is it, is it Willie Nelson? Is it <laughs> John Bon Jovi? Is it Clive that's, Burton? No, is it Alabama? Black Anvil. Alabama. Is it Kenny Rogers? <laughs> Kenny Rogers has been dead a while. Black I think. What up? Is it Lenny? Is is it Wendy O? All right. Eggs. It's God. That's a good one. <laughs> there we go. It's God. Yo, nothing for nothing, but yo, God is playing a pretty serious Rickenbacker bass in that picture. It's crazy. Definitely. All right. Is it a legend? It is a, it is a legend. Lenny. Yeah. All right, here we go. Is it is it? Is it our Lord and Savior? Good one. <laughs> All right. Is it General Grant? John Denver. <laughs> it sort of looks like General Grant a little. It does. Yeah, yeah. Ulysses S. Grant. One of them. Happy birthday, yeah. Lemmy. Here, here, yeah, here's, here, Michelle here's knows what's shot. up. Here's, here's, here's another shot. Um, I want to do one a little. Yeah, this one's a little different. Here you go. Tell us about, tell us about what this is, Stephen. You know what? This was this was the last time I got to see Motorhead, actually. And this was, I think, back in 2012. Uh, they did the what was called the Gigantor with uh, Megadeth, Motorhead, Volbeat, uh, Lacuna Coil. And uh, it was under the garden at the, uh, what are they calling that, the theater back then? The Paramount. It used to be the Paramount, yeah, right? It had a, number, a whole bunch of names. I always think of it as the Felt Forum yeah, myself. Felt Forum, that's what I know it as. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, this was awesome because I, of all the years I'd seen Motorhead, this was the first time I got into the photo pit and I was just thrilled. And, and uh, they just, for, I mean, you know, no offense to Megadeth, but going on after Motorhead is is usually not a successful endeavor, you know? And Motorhead just crushed it. They were so good. And uh, and he, you know, I mean, this was, he, he he lived a while after this, but but they just were amazing. And, oh, he and lived. It, he lived. You know. Yeah, his, dude, li dude lived, dude lived hard. He lived I, enough for all three of us. Oh, yeah. And the coolest thing was when I was Speak, walking yo, Speaking of the... hard living, yo, Danny Diablo, I see you out there. You're coming on oh, soon. Shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. One more time. Happy Chanukah. <laughs> Danny Diablo. The, uh, the coolest thing about that day was when I showed up early, 
all the motorhead gear was just sitting outside. And, and it's it just like nobody was watching it. It was like behind a little thing. And you saw like his, you know, that murder one head on his, his, uh, his base head. And I was just like, oh, if I only had a hand truck, this would be in my yeah, basement you know right now. You know, what's funny. We were lucky to be able to play some festivals with him. And I got a yeah. picture. One of the nice. last shows they played in Europe behind next to their banner before they went on. We went on like um, they were going on, you know, a couple bands after us. So it was good to. Just take a post up by that. Oh, uh, nice. Like, so shout out to Motorhead, man. Yeah. Oh, um, now, as, as a bass player, like, where does he stand in your uh, in your influence? You know, you know what it is? It's funny because uh, um, I, you know, I think I appreciate him more the more the older I get for how much I, I, I'm like him. Like, um, we are meat and potatoes guys, but yeah. we're into writing songs. We have our own style, but we're not the prettiest. So it's like, I, you know, every, every day I become more and more Lemmy like, and I'm good with that. You know, what that's I mean? a, that's, that's a, that's a great thing to aspire to. Hey, let me tell you, I got a story about this picture right here. Right. <laughs> me, oh, me and my brother were um, doing, we were interviewing people for the nativity in black, black Sabbath tribute record. If you ah. remember that biohazard had that oh, yeah. off track after forever. They killed it. Yeah. They killed it. And there were some great tracks on there. So we were we were doing interviews um, for that, you know, for like an EPK or whatever. Me and my brother, and we go interview Lemmy, and he's really sort of down and miserable and just sort of like, Ugh. and like, we sit him down, we get in front of him with the camera, the lights, and he's just, I'm like thinking, wow, I don't, I don't, this ain't gonna go good, you know? Like he he just seemed really like not into it and. So then he goes, hold on a second, mate. And he and he and he he takes this thing out of his pocket <laughs> and he and he puts it <laughs> right here and he goes <sighs> and then he goes, ah, and then and he, he has a what was he drinking? Uh, the whiskey, the whiskey. Jack and Coke. Jack and Coke. He goes, pow, and he goes, pow, and then he goes, ah, and he goes, okay, let's do it. Oh. And he was he was on point. Listen, <laughs> on <laughs> point. Uh, you know, Frank Sinatra did it his way. Lemmy did yeah, it his right. way. And Frank was a Jack uh, Jack Daniels guy, too. I yeah. salute them all. Yeah, absolutely. That's a you rare clean shaven shot you got of him, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank yeah. you. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> Damn, I was like, yeah, that. yeah, He's Eric. Like, that's it. Yeah, it was, it was, he was like, he just dumped it out on his hand and went, that's hard. That's hard. He's a, you know, again, to the end, he went out how he wanted to. Yeah, he went with, um, he went out with his boots on, yo. For sure, for sure. And and hey. and, and, and better even greater for the legend, you know, to yeah. Spe speaking of going out with your boots on, what's going on with Sid the Kid? Sid. Man? There you go. What's going on. There you go. Sid, <laughs> are you you're still in London, bro? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm 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 still here. Yeah, you should put bars in front of his, his little <laughs> you know, like yeah. the fuck out. Who the fuck out? So, Sid, so Sid, let me get this. Let me get this straight, Sid. You've been sitting in a hotel room in London now for a week because you turned up COVID positive and you can't get on the plane and come home. Is that right? <laughs> Pretty much. He's in a London dungeon. Yep. Uh, and, and that there, that's a tribute to Benny Hill. For those who don't know what the fuck that <laughs> photo is about, you got you got to come on. You have to. You know, I'm on the River Thames. It, it's only you know, Eric. It's only a uh, fucking thing that I do that one photo. Yep. Yeah, that's the Benny Hill for sure. The... Hey, I want to bring... I wanna, I've been here. Yo, hold on. I want to bring a friend of ours on. Uh, you know him. You love him. We're excited he's going to come on for a minute and say hi. From Agnostic Front, Mr. Roger Moret. Buddy! Yeah. 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 What's going on, guys? I'm having a hard time. Merry Christmas, Roger. <laughs> What's going on? Merry Christmas. Oh Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you, man. You guys are so low. It's hard to hear you guys. Well, put we your, hear you. your headphones are low. Roger! How you Yo. doing, buddy? Is that Hoya? I, I, I can barely see. Yo, this is Hoya. <laughs> What's up, guys? What How up, Roger? Is, oh, that's Sid, too. What's going on, guys? Yo, Sid is oh, stranded yeah. in London, man. You're in London? He's stranded yes. in London. He's got Look, COVID. He can't come home. Look here. I, I've been, I tested positive uh, about a week ago. Yeah. Oh, shit, man. Yeah. Well, I hope you get seeing better. All, you know, seeing get all, all, the, all these bands that we grew up on, Roger, and you know what? 
I would do it again. I, I hear you. How hey, the hell Sid, do you, hey, do you, Sid. How do you get your face centered in this damn thing? Oh, there, there you go. go. Oh, <laughs> there you hey, go. Hey, Sid. <laughs> nice. This, this is probably oh, Wadi. Sid. If you, this is probably the moment that you got COVID right here, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, no, probably not. This is, this is You're probably lucky probably that the moment You're lucky right that's here you got. where you where know, you right, breathe right, it right, in. I crabs that minute. <laughs> You should go no, truth be told because nah, I'm only I, kidding. No. I, I love Wadi. I just had to say I saw it. I was I went to 13 shows uh 13 shows in 14 days. Went to five cocky reject shows, three UK sub shows, saw discharge, saw the exploited. Should be a couple of local like shows. 10 variants from all that shit. <laughs> Probably, but you know what? Look, it goes it goes on to say we've all being in that bathroom at CB's. Yo, how, yo, that's Charlie. How's Charlie Harper doing, bro? Charlie's doing great. I mean, honestly, because yo, of the whole COVID restriction. Here's a question for all you guys. Go we, ahead, we, go we, ahead, Roger. We've all been to the bat. We've all been to the bathroom CB's, but who has actually sat on a throne? You, you, I, you know, <laughs> you. while while shit's been happening, while people you, you, out. you know who else? Evan who? Seinfeld. You. <laughs> two of the nasty, two, two of New Yo, York Marcos nastiest. Hoya, Hoya, Hoya's been to my basketball game. Oh. <laughs> Remember the, the, the Daisy Dukes? Listen, <laughs> this is a family show. Listen, a family show, people love it. Yeah. Man's yeah, a family. I had da a Daisy Duke fa uh, phase in his life. It wasn't too pretty. <laughs> hey, that Hey, Ann, 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 Ann says hi. Ann May says hi, Roger. Oh, say, I, I, I can't see any comments or nothing, but hi to everybody. Out of Ann. Yeah. So, Roger, tell us how you doing, man. We love you. We miss you, man. Uh, Give it a little update. I'm, I'm much better, bro. I really am. Uh, I got a lot of clearance to do a lot of stuff, so I'm, I'm doing good. You know, I just I was able to start walking two weeks ago, and that was good. And um, I went to the doctor last Friday and gave me some more clearance. And there's a couple of difficulty things I'm still dealing with, but he feels very positive about, you know, give it a few more months. Hopefully, you know, I'll get past those things and just got to keep checking every three months. I'm, I'm one and the other, the other two, I have to check every six months. And, but I feel good. I feel good. good. Oh yeah. Good. Good. We're glad everybody's okay in the family. Yeah, we're all okay. You know, just getting through, it's been a hard year for all of us, you know. You could just yeah. imagine just getting through all that and then getting through um, Christmas, you know, uplifting and try to get, you know, just try to get right. It's been, it's been, it's been a crazy hard year, but you know, I'm optimistic. I like to feel like things are going to get a lot better. Hopefully, 2022 is going to get better. I, I said that in 20 for 20. 21 and you know it's, it's just a roller coaster but it is what it is you know yeah. some of us are still with us some of us have sadly left you know but uh let's hope things get better you know hey another old friend of another old friend of ours wants to say hi mr danny lilker yeah danny what's up guys what's up? how you doing danny happy holidays merry christmas uh <laughs> you got you know i'm a I'm one of the chosen people, so uh, <laughs> uh, I chose to have some fucking wine. So yeah, there uh, you go. Hey, um, real quick, I got a, a Lemmy Motorhead story I'd like to share. Sure, go ahead. Um, in 2015, <clears throat> nuclear assaults at some festivals in Europe. We played the Barcelona Rock Fest. Motorhead played right before us on another stage in the same big field, and. We had to go out after Motorhead because, Stephen, you were saying that's no fun, but uh, we had to. Um, anyway, while we were warming up, I discovered to my delight that Motorhead tunes to E-flat just like we do because as I was warming up, I was able to play Motorhead riffs, the same ones that are playing really loud. And then there was like 10 or 20 kids who were watching us set up because they wanted a good spot, and I'm going over to them going, what the fuck is wrong with you? Go watch Motorhead. <laughs> <laughs> and... um. When they ended their set spontaneously, they had a big, long drone. And because we had the same tuning, what we did is we made this natural seed. As they faded out, people started walking over to our stage, and we picked up the slack and started droning the exact same note. So it was kind of cool. It was like a handoff. Oh, that's cool. That's, that's a segue. Awesome. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, five months later, he was no longer with us. So. Uh 
Yeah. 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 My Motorhead story, Danny, I think it was uh, 1986. Yeah, it was 86. We just released Cause for Alarm. And, and we went to go New Orleans to play with them. Uh, I think Halloween, Halloween, Halloween played. I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember. But uh, it didn't go over too well. We, we, we They won that Locomotive tour, like the album The Locomotive, I think. Cause I remember no, that, Orgasmatron. That, that yeah, one. that damn train setting up on a yeah, stage. Yeah, like, yeah. like, what could we put our equipment up there? We got to go on first, you know? So then we go on, and it didn't last long. You know, they cut us off really quickly. And the album just came out. The place is going nuts. This is a stadium in New Orleans, you know. The place is going nuts, and they cut us off. I took my bottle of water, threw it at the side. I'm like, fuck you, whatever. <laughs> then uh, all the other bands played, and then Motorhead went to play. And and uh, there was there was heavy slam dancing going on, you know. I, I, for some reason, Lemmy wasn't about it, you know. So he started fucking with people, telling people, oh, quit that punk rock slam dancey shit and fuck a full blown riot happened. They flipped, they flipped the motorhead bus to the side. It was crazy. Oh, Jesus. Wow. And we were supposed to be on that tour. The next day we were th- not we, on the we, tour. We, we got thrown out of the tour. They accused us of starting a riot. We didn't do shit, you know? But, <laughs> and then uh, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, Chromex took over that tour. But it, yeah. was, it, was a, it was a, that's my motorhead story. Wow. What, wow. what year was that, Roger? <laughs> 1986. Oh, so that was the tour then. Okay, that's yeah. that was that was the cause for alarm tour, the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 you know what? I I, hate, I gotta I gotta go because I'm supposed to take my son to return. Go ahead. We're just kid. glad you stopped but, by. Yeah, hey, Roger. Yeah, Yo, brother. I, I love you guys yeah. all. Hoya, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Hey, listen. Re- reach out. I want to talk to you about something. Yeah, we talk. Right, I love I love you guys. Be good. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody out there listening, and uh, and let's let's hope for the best. You know, I'm glad you guys are still around. I'm glad to see all your faces. Love you guys, bro. Love you, Raj. We, we love you too, Roger. We'll yeah, talk right. later. Too. Be good. Take care. Take care, Raj. Well, there you uh, have it. The best part about that is they said that then they accused us of starting a riot and kicked us off, and then they put the chromags on that tour. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you I remember? At, do you remember this show at the Palladium? I was at this riots? show. Agnostic Front, Nuclear Assault. Any memories of this, Danny? Uh, nice. Shit, what year would that have been? I think it was 97. No, 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 no. That was uh, uh, 92. 92. Oh, 92. It was late. It was I, I was at this show. We didn't go to shows till eight, for, till 88. I'm a later guy, and I was at that because okay. mad people got fucked up at that show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you, were, you were on stage, too, that, right when everyone's fucking bum rush the stage. Screaming, scared. Hey, I don't scared, know nothing. Hey. I don't know nothing. All right, 92. <laughs> Lenny and John tell yeah. me it's 92. That well, he great. says, I was at that show at the Palladium, the Riot show. G.G. G. G. Allen's brother Merle filmed that entire show. Uh-huh. Merle it's, Allen. It's on YouTube. This is 30 years ago as of next yeah. month. Oh, wow. Don't say that, man. That should <laughs> give me a stomach ache right now. You during, <laughs> during the Murphy's Law set, the bouncers were getting stupid. Jimmy basically, at the end of the set, he mooned them, and then he did a literally a fucking swan flip dive off the stage. Oh, man, what a great show! Um, I'm not sure I was there, dudes. So I think I might have joined Brutal Truth by then. You're talking June. Oh. 19th. I think I was on the campaign for musical destruction. Was, was was there a nuclear assault without Danny Loker? Briefly, there was this dude Scott Metaxas. When a- I did not know that. I thought I thought nuclear assault started and ended with Danny Loker. Uh, well, it didn't end with me the first time. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it did. I don't know. It's it's going to sound fucked up, but they did limp along a little bit afterwards. And I'm not saying that all because, you know, Dandy wasn't in the band, but that's pretty much what happened. Because Oh, Lenny says, Lenny, Lenny, Lenny from Crazy Ada says, Danny, you played that show. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there you go. I bet you there's some people there like Koya with some good weed, and I don't remember shit. There, there, there you go. Hey Sid, hey Sid, uh, back back to you here. Uh, is this who's this? That's GBH. You saw GBH. Nice. Forty wow. God, fucking over forty years, and they're still fucking doing it. God. And they honestly, that show still. crowd was a little tame, but they were on fucking point from beginning to end. They only played like a thirty-five minute set, 35, 40 minute set. Mm-hmm. They were on point from beginning to end. Everything sounded like it did 20 years ago. Like 
They might be old, but they still fucking they, they still bring that fucking A game one hundred percent. You know, I mean, they 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 tune down one step down. The tempo is slightly slower, but it's hard as fuck. And again, this of all the shows, the thirteen shows I've been to, this specific show was the fucking most insane show. Now, for those who who seen the exploited, maybe in the last five years, especially with Wadi and Wooly, literally having heart attacks on stage at two oh, wow. different shows. That's um, hardcore. Seeing them. This is the first time I've seen them since 2005, I want to say. They, do, they do, do they do songs off that record? That What's that record I like? Fuck. Um. <laughs> yeah, they played, they played Fuck the System. But see, now, you, you listen to that record, yeah, it's all, you know, it's all metal, double kick. Everything. I love that record, man. But if you watch them now, and I know they're, they're planning to come over to the States in May, God willing. They, they're planning to do some East Coast and West Coast States. Anybody's gonna go see them now. It's literally, and it kind of, sounds kind of weird sometimes. What they say, "What is old is new again." They literally sounded like they did back in 1983. It's hard. It's punk. It's got that metal tip. Hey, if you didn't, if, if you didn't punk. get COVID from Wadi, you probably got it at this thing, man. <laughs> no, like I said, Drew. I, you know, a lot of people. Well, you know, I'm not gonna go on this whole spiel, but you know, I took as, almost every single precaution possible, which I did. But you know what? And, and, and uh, all you really do is be last, careful. Last shot, from, last shot from your journey here. This is uh, our boy JJ in Discharge, right? Nice. Yep. And the, the one show that I wanted to see more next to the Exploited show was just to see Rainy play bass. Because if it wasn't for Rainy, for Lemmy, for Daryl, for all these guys that we grew up on, well, me being a bass player too, next to Hoya and Danny, I wouldn't be doing what the fuck I do. All right, let's not get melodramatic, bro. Hey, I'm like, melodramatic. I, I speak the truth. I speak the truth, Drew. Dude, I saw Discharge at Obscene Extreme a few years ago at Czech Republic, mostly Grind Festival. Uh -huh. and, uh, I can't tell you. I got to uh, second what Sid said and fucking third and fourth it because as far as Rainy sound, between Rainy and fucking Lemmy and just, just for my inspiration and shit. Was and, Terry Bones playing with him? Yeah, yep. but I never... Dude, I never saw... Shout out to my brother Terry Bones. The now, I, knew that, I know uh, Discharge went through that kind of uh, strange little Led Zeppelin esque phase back in. The, <laughs> you want to call it that? Um, well, whatever. I'm just going to stay, you know, diplomatic on that shit. But just saying that uh, when I saw Discharge for the first time a few years ago, I was standing on the side of stage and I got a fucking lump in my throat, dude. I felt like, yeah, I mean, just uh, they did it properly and. Yeah, it was a fucking beautiful thing. And the next morning, I had a, like a coffee and a cigarette with them, and the fucking back patio of the f hotel in the Czech Republic. And yeah, man, a little, I felt a little fanboyish to be honest. Yeah, no, cool. and, and I mean, and but speaking of that, really quick, Danny, even that show after after you know they played, you know they did their thing. I hung out with Rainey for like twenty minutes. We just talked about bass, like about his sound, and I'm just like in my head, I'm like going, "Holy shit! Holy shit!" 14 year old me never ever would have fucking thought that this would that that moment would have fucking happened and it did. Well right. now that you're living there, Sid, you got plenty of time to catch up with these people, man. Well, don't be surprised. I just jump on and say, who the fuck is this this knucklehead DJ? Fucking fire him because I'm the fucking DJ. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, Steven, we'll catch up with you later. Sid, we'll catch up with you Absolutely. later. Absolutely. Oh, right? wait, Drew, 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 really quick, Drew. What? Was there one last thing? We'll do possibly? it later. We'll do it later. later. All right, all right. <laughs> Just <laughs> like that. Look, I got all the screen room. Kaiser so say. <laughs> Just, exactly. Just like that. Hey, you know what? I think it's time, man. I think it's time that we brought on an international superstar, man. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Pow! Queens represent. Ah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another. We can't hear you, man. We can't hear we you. We don't hear you. We don't hear you. Listen, this could nope. be a. We're, we're hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. All right, fuck this fucking microphone shit. What's up? What's happening? What's up, dude? How you guys doing? Good. Hi, Dad. I'm doing, doing my show. I, <laughs> <laughs> shout out, shout, shout out to Hoya Rock. Hoya, look yeah. amazing. Thank you. How you doing? 
What's yeah. it, What's going on, man? Nothing. I was. Uh, I went to. My, I was in the story of Queens yesterday for my uh, my girl's uh, family for Christmas. Good. Okay. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a it's like a Queens. It's like a, it's like a Queens show. Like like show of hands. The, the only the only borough that 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 matters is Queens. <laughs> wait, wait. Sh show of hands. Who's born in Queens? Yeah, I, I was born in Manhattan. I was born in Manhattan. Yo, the two Jew, the two Jews, me and Danny Look, are born in Queens. You That's other two it. guys, you other two, you, the, the other two guys in front. I was born in Metropolitan Hospital. Who's that? Born I was born in Flower Ninety Eighth Street East Side, Spanish Harlem, the, the beginning of Spanish Harlem. Yeah. No, I was born at Kew Gardens, but the hospital's not even there no more. I think they burned it to the ground after. Oh man! Um, hey, hey Hoya, how how did you how far back you go with Danny? How did you meet Danny? With which Danny? Uh, Danny Diablo. I'm sorry. Uh, Danny Diablo. Well, like, all right, he's gonna tell you. Like, we tell the story a thousand times. He always does. You know, there's always three versions, but I'll tell you the real version, the truth. Basically, we ran into each other at a, a record shop. Numbers uh, of records. Numbers records. It was like a, a, a famous record shop. Because Jackson they Heights. Really had underground records at uh, in our neighborhood. And, you know, Jackson and, Heights. So one day we were looking at the records and it was me and Beto. And we crossed this redheaded guy who was dressed like me because we were dressed like skin. <laughs> and he was with another Asian guy. And we... We gave each other dirty looks as we walked by each other, and then we kind of kept it moving. Fast forward, he runs into MQ doing graffiti, right? They, they're like, who are you? Who are you? I'm MQ, blah, blah, blah. We end up all meeting up, going to hang out to meet up the same people. We, we, we realize each other. Um, yeah. You know, it's kind of like, hey, what's up? What's up? Um, some guy was going to beat up Isaac, and then I had to save him. Oh, this guy tell the story for the real story. Look at this out. Take this out. Look, all right, long story. Hold on, let me finish. I'll finish. I'll, finish. <laughs> I'll tell the truth. So what happens is this is the truth. What happens is we go to hang out with, with all the fellas. Me and MQ roll up, and Ezek rolls up. We don't know each other. And then as he's walking up, and we're all talking, some this this one kid, I forgot his name, but he was a kid who used to hang out with the other guys. He ends up stepping to Ezek. Right in front of me and MQ. Now we're all meeting for the first time right now. And the guy basically tells Isaac, like, no, man, you went over me. So me and MQ are looking at each other, and then we're looking at them like, no, what what is what are you gonna do? Like to like kind of looking at E. We're like, oh, well, something's gonna pop off. And then Isaac was like, Yes, yeah, so and and then we look at the other dude, like, what are you gonna do now? <laughs> <laughs> then we started laughing, and then we, we all started laughing, and here we go. Thirty years later, <laughs> is that right? Is that right, Isaac? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it was funny. I bumped into MQ on the train while I was taking pictures of my graffiti. I was taking pictures on the tracks of graffiti and on the seven train. And it all kind of happened in weird because we saw each other, then yeah. MQ ran into him, and then we ended up hanging out. It all kind of happened like boom, boom, boom. Like I, we numbers of records was the store that my mother used to go to all the time for Spanish. For Spanish music and uh, the hip hop was all metal. Listen, metal you could rap, find from, yeah, you could find from merengue records to screwdriver records. Where this was this? Boy, uh, where was this place? The Jackson where Heights, on thirty seventh Avenue on eighty something streets. Yeah, yep. Sounds... Insane, insane. They had collectors. They would have all the real shit. It was like Bleak of Bob's. Like just as good, like for us, you know. We were like, man, this is our neighbor, this is our backyard, and they had all imports and seven inches, even some demos and shit. I think. Yeah. Wait, Danny, you remember the Music Box Union Turnpike in Utopia? You remember that place? Can't hear you. Yeah, he's muted. Hold on, I don't know why. Okay. Yo, you, you, mu you muted you, you muted yourself, Isaac. Hey. Oh, there you go. I, you know, listen, only I can beat myself. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I remember under one of you to turn pike. There it goes again. Speaking of Beto, yo, shouting out Rob Rosario down there Dominican. in Jersey. Yep. Dirty Dominican. Dominican. <laughs> Dominicans. <laughs> My fungo crew. Yo, but, but listen, go. Drew, check this out. Yeah. When, what? When, when I was, when I used to go to Numbers of Records, 
I used to throw my boy Demetrius, JM1 DMS, and he's a uh, like the a tall player. Greek metalhead. So, uh, we used to go there all the time. And Hoya, Beto, they used to walk by us. I'd be like, yo, look at this fucking, look at these weirdos. And we, we, yo, we yeah, it was me and Beto. Listen. From, they're from down the neighborhood. And, no, listen, it was we, right. It was me and Beto. And it was, but it was you and Woody, wasn't it? Or you and JM? It was me, Woody, and JM. Okay, yo, it was three against two, yo. You already <laughs> saw how we get down. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. We were like hey, 16, 15 years old or some shit like that. Yeah, 15 years old. Yeah. Hey, Isaac, what's going on with this? What? Oh, that's, a, that's, that's my hair. That's a, I did a video. I did a video. Because that's my hair. And uh, right there, that, that, that video, uh, uh, Stefan Oreo was taking pictures of my lady in the train tracks over there. She, she did a big photo shoot. Uh, my, my, my girlfriend, Alexandra Rose, did a big photo shoot with uh, Stefan Oreo in the L.A. River. And fucking, we, might as well, we did a video. while they is, that Cle- is that Cleveland? What, Milwaukee? Mo- no, that's fucking L.A., nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, LA. Yo, the chat room's on fire. That's more yeah, this chat room <laughs> fucking crew over here. Is it? Is this? But isn't this the new? Is this your new release? No, that's that's, that's that came out like, like six months ago. Damn, what was I thinking? I who knows? You know what? You gotta update your shit, bro. My update my shit, nigga. I just came back, Melly, for the fourth time. <laughs> you know, um, I just came back from LA. Fucking, I, I I got the bad concrete dream that I managed when I managed. I got signed to Suburban Noise Records. So you're they, 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 you're, ma- they, you're managing Concrete Dream. Yep. Have mercy. Wow. You ever heard of Sick Night? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should manage me, man. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you gotta get rid of Sid the Kid. Yeah. The Puerto <laughs> Rican heat miser. That's a good one. You had the Puerto Rican heat miser hair. Somebody said that's true, and that picture's kind of hard. The the part, part, I, did, I, did a, I did a bit. Uh, I went out to LA that time also and did an interview for, with Adam Twenty Two from No Jumper, the biggest, the biggest podcast in the world, next to Joe Rogan's. Hey, there's a connection, uh, Danny. Danny uh, Lilka, you're up in Rochester, right? Yes, I am. There's a little bit of a connection. I see that Madball and the Take Thursday, February 10th are playing at the club at Water Street. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll be in Rochester. Is this the first you're hearing of this, Hoya? No, I, I saw it earlier on, on Instagram. That's why I first learned about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, everybody that makes you feel better out there, I'm learning about these shows as you go, so... Shout out to whoever's posting on shows. <laughs> no, um, that's cool. I'll definitely be there. And I haven't, there hasn't been any shows. That this, well, obviously, there haven't been any fucking shows anywhere with all this COVID shit. But even before COVID, there wasn't shit at this place for years. So somebody must have taken it over. So, um, yeah. That's Yo, Hoya, Hoya, is Rochester a mad ball hot spot? Yeah, you know, wherever there's white trash bearded people, there's mad ball people there. You know what I mean? <laughs> we end there. We love white trash. We love beards. We oh. love fucking biscuits. I got like, Why are you laughing? He's like, he's like, talk shit about the white trash, but he, you know, he, in his heart, he has a fucking room for them. And, and you're playing, this is the night before you play in Ohio, right? Speaking of white trash, shout out to all my, my Clevelanders. Yeah. Beards, flannels. I love it. Shout out to Dan- That's Danny Cleveland Diablo. Cle- Go ahead. What? Cleveland Rocks. Hey, shout out to Cleveland. Word up. Yeah, let me Cleveland. tell you, Cleveland, Cleveland got a lot of history, man. They get forgotten about it, you know, sometimes with how deep it was this hardcore shit they got, you know, that it's crazy. They, they, it gets forgotten about. Even with myself, I'm like, I learn about some of these bands and you forget they were like from Ohio and Cleveland and they're like some of the early um, sperm cells on some of these. Uh... Yeah. Well, Cleveland, Cleveland. Hey, Danny, you're, you're clicking. Diablo, you're clicking. I'm, I got, you know, when you're not talking, I got to mute you, Danny Diablo. Um, here is, you know who's coming on the show? Your, your boy, bro. 
Yeah, the second best looking guy in Madball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mike's crazy. coming up. Mike's coming on the show, man. You know that's good. That's good. He's got that's you know he's a killer. You know he's a uh, uh, he's a killer with a smile. He's yeah. a good. Uh, you know that's a, that's that that's the axe man You're right there. But good shit, good shit. How, how did you guys get hook up with Mike? We were like it was funny because um, we had a show. He was filling in. For, for my boy Mav and, and Wisdom and Chains, and we had a show in Europe together, right? And at the time, we were already looking for a guitarist. So we knew, obviously, I know we know the Wisdom stuff, and then we, we, you know, we were like, okay, let's see who this kid filling in is. And we saw that he killed it. And, you know, and then we were like, you know, the light bulb went off. Touch bass with Richie from Wisdom and Joe. They were like, yo, he's a great dude, great guitarist. And they know how we get down, you know? We're like, there's a certain type of animal to kind of tour with us, you know, like, you know, they got to be able to be in a van, got to be able to like uh, keep moving, you know, play in front of 10 people or 10,000. You got to be ready for it all, you know, sure, sure, and and not expect nothing, you know, kind of thing. And he's a great dude, you know, so and he, and he fit in perfect. So shout out to Ganari. Good, good. What else? What else you got going on, the, uh, Isaac? Uh just living life. That's it. <laughs> Star, Star right. Head Records dropping in uh, Fe February 14th, uh, Valentine's Day. That's a good day. For, that's good. That's a good EP day for called, Danny Diablo record. It, it's good. It's EP called Generators of Violence. Star Head Generators of Violence. It's on Force Five Records. We did uh, five new songs. It's hard as fuck. You know, same shit, different day. Makes sense. Makes sense. Hey, Danny Milker, you guys are playing, uh, you're doing a, a black and blue upstate show, right? Tell us about this. Uh, yeah, because you guys were actually talking about uh, Cleveland hardcore, and I was going to mention that we're playing with Ringworm soon. Oh, yeah, Ringworm. There you go. Um, so, yeah, this show that you're looking at here, um, I'm going to have to put on my fucking glasses. And, you know, <laughs> you like me, you got to do this shit. Okay, yeah. So this is the brick by brick release party, and damn, whole bunch of fucking bands on here. And what appears to be an evil vulture. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, um, with nuclear, like for instance, I saw you Zach, a couple of weeks ago when we played in uh, we played in Brooklyn. That was great, man. You, you sounded amazing. Ah, thanks, man. Yeah. Well, I mean. Uh, that was funny. We didn't know there was a curfew until we went on stage at that show. And they're like, hurry up, you guys got 35 minutes. I'm like, you could have fucking told us that four hours ago. We were just right over there about a merch. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the show in Albany uh, um, is guy that should be killer. I'm just going to fucking throw it out there now. If there's one of those lake effect blizzards and there's 50 feet of fucking snow in the ground, I might stay home or I'll have to fucking leave the night before and take skis. Otherwise, yeah, man. That's going to be a cool show. And, uh, yeah. Um, like I said, we only play once in a while now. So <clears throat> make it. Scott Earth you know. says Brooklyn was a blast. Scott Earth from Silence Equals Death says the Brooklyn show was a blast. Thanks, bro. That was a lot of fun, man. Um, yep. I will say that the beer selection at that venue left a little to be desired now that I'm a craft beer dude. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think Kansas High is going to say fuck it, man. You know, now I can feel like I'm 24 again. <laughs> AE, AE, Ricardo asks, when there's going to be a new Crown of Thorns album? Uh, X, X Design. Yeah, there you go. Right. Sounds like a while. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we just did a tour, and uh, we, we killed it. We got uh, Paul Delaney playing bass with us now. Ruined his life. Yeah. Black Anvil. Ah, right. Black Anvil to our planning of generation in New York in March. Right, sorry. Just mentally connecting some dots here. Um, shout out to the devil. Shout out to Black Anvil. Shout out to the devil. Paul the right in there. Paul's the hardest. No, Paul, yeah. he got, he's the guy when I need a, when they need a fill-in for me, when I got to yeah. I go right away, I said, go to Paul first. Now, <laughs> Snag my guy up, dude. He's trying to snag I my, my hitter. I've seen him step in for Mad Ball, Cro Mags, fucking 
all kinds of shit. That's, that's you, the two people I wanted. He's he's my my, my go to. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, Drew, I thought about something else I should mention. I'm not going to fly or anything, but right. there's a big metal show in the middle of March 19th at Irving Plaza that I'm actually going to be emceeing. Um, the fuck is that? Maybe oh. my dogs. Oh, it's uh, every time my mouth moved, I heard barking. I'm like, wow, how did I do that? <laughs> it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. anyway, uh, who the fuck is playing? Immolation, Demolition Hammer. Is malignancy playing or no? Mortician, you were fucking mortician. Black Anvil and uh, one of the branches name escapes me. Who? Funeral Leech. Thank you to my lovely wife, Funeral what? Leech. Yeah, he goes. So there he goes. There's, there's your dude right there. Yeah. So yeah, he's beautiful. Oh. Right there. And I'm gonna be the MC, which means I get to announce bands and basically drink That's beer. That's the G right there. Not have to do anything. Take an old guy into your Spartanburg or something. Yeah. So okay. yeah, who's that? That's gonna be fun. So I'll be down in the city for that too. Isaac, anybody you want to shout out on the uh, way out? Hoya uh, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Hoya hey, Danny on uh, Queens all day. You know that that, that the Queen. If it wasn't for Queens, there will be no hardcore scene. Just remember that. Damn fucking straight from Queens. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I like to shout um, out. I like to I'd love to Mexico. argue, but I can't. Greg Satari, Base Mafia. Greg Satari, Base Mafia. Mafia. Base Mafia, Mafia. 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 Always. All right. Hey, Easy, we'll talk to you later, man. I love you guys, Danny. I love you, Hoy. I love you, Drew Stone. I love, love you. I love you, too, buddy. You later. I, I love you guys. Yeah. Go ahead all day, everyone. Queen Bye. all day. Queen's all day. You know the deal. <laughs> all right. Hey, how about this? How about this classic... Danny Loka shot right here. Iconic Danny Loka shot with the with the youth of today shirt and the Budweiser. I like to laugh. Yeah, you've always been a master of uh, irony. Yeah, that was great. You know who took this? Yo, you took this, right? Yes, I did. It's Where Sundance. Was it Sunday. Frank. Wow, Steven, you took that picture? Yeah. Yes, I did. What year was that? This is a, either 87 or 88. Wow. It was the GB, GBH No Need to Panic tour. Wow. And I believe the accused opened up and Napalm as well. Excuse yeah. my dog. Somebody's coming in. So that's a, yep. yeah. That's a, also, yeah, Blaine and Alex from the accused, right, Steve? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the accused, uh, they were on the more fun than an open casket funeral wow. tour. <laughs> and Napalm was opening up, who, uh, uh, our Long Island guys, in fact. Um, and the cool thing about this photo is when Drew was putting together the first New York Hardcore Chronicles, he posted this photo looking for who took it. And this really began uh, my relationship with working with Drew. And uh, so this is kind of important picture to my story here. Yeah, this is how we met. I, 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 I needed clearance for this photo and tracked it down and Turns out yep. you took it at uh, Frank Cariola's Sundance. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The CBGBs of Bayshore. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I know if, uh, you probably talked about this before, but we always called the Sundance the Sunrise because you always went on at like four in the fucking morning. Oh, my God. Yeah. The headliners would go on at, at 10 after two in the morning. It was, yeah. it was, you know it, why? It was you know why? Because back then they, they wanted people in the place drinking as long as oh, they yeah. could. So they'd have, the, you know, fuck it. You know, that's how they made their money, from the booze. Right. Yeah. So I, I saw Nuclear Assault there so many times, and just uh, it was just such a great, great – I for us on Long Island, it was like the best place. Paulie, well, says, so, Paulie says we called it scum dance. <laughs> and yes, we did. Absolutely. Affectionately. Uh, shouting out Paris Mayhew, Cro-Mag. Sundance was a great venue. Yeah, I saw Cro I saw Chromags. I saw Chromags at Sundance, right? You know, I oh, remember. For sure. I remember seeing Chromags at Streets, the 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 later era Chromags with Paris when Harley was singing. I, I do Paris? remember. Yeah. Um, it was it was a great venue as long as you had some other ways to stay awake besides coffee. But that's all I'm gonna say. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, but that was like the next step up, like being a real club. Be like, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, ah, this is legit stage, legit size. It wasn't like a fucking garage. So when you play, oh, yeah. it, like, okay, we're playing a real club. Yeah, I remember yeah. going there to see like Murphy's Law somebody, and I was like, oh, you know, oh shit, all right, we travel to Long Island. Now we're like, oh, we're at this disco. Wow, it's a real club, the real rock club, you know. And yeah. You know, oh yeah, well, where where it's at, you know. You can hey, Hoyer, you, Hoyer, know. Do you have, Hoyer or Danny? Do, I mean, I know we haven't played a lot of shows lately, but do you guys have trouble playing late shows these days? <laughs> oh, well, I do. I only, play, I only play. I only play matinees. I only do matinees now. You know. <laughs> um, no, uh, definitely. I just. If to go, you guys are on at one in the morning. I'm like, uh, I don't know if that's, yeah. I mean, I'm just impatient. So if it was up to me, I would just go on stage at nine every fucking night and just get off stage and have a beer. But you know, um, yeah, I uh, I start like feeling like it's past my bedtime or something, which is ridiculous. But hey, you know, I'm 57 now, so I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm just saying, sure, my stamina and wherewithal is not what it was 30 years ago. But uh, you know what? People fucking okay. come pay money to see you, and you, you got to go on stage late, and you fucking do it, and you still give it 110%. And then uh, right, if, especially if it's a local show, then I could just be in my own bed and fucking an hour later. So We just did that punk rock bowling we went on like at 1 or 2 in the morning. It kind of <laughs> sucked, but if the, you know, the people were there, and the people, the energy yeah. was still in the room. Then it didn't matter. But, you know, and we were playing with H2O, so... You know, when we're hanging out, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you're hanging out with people, you got you know that that are you you, you know your your friends with, it don't matter what time you go on. You know, as long yep. as you're hanging, you know, for for us at least. Yeah, yeah. All right, hey Stephen, we'll, we'll catch up with you in a bit. I'll see you a little bit. There you go, uh, Danny. Anybody you want to shout out? Anybody you want to thank on the way out? Um. Well, uh, I just want to thank everybody who came down to that show that we did in Brooklyn um, at the end. What was it, like three? Yeah, about a month ago now. Um, because, you know, we haven't played a lot of shows. Obviously, that's redundant with all the COVID shit, but also with the good old New York hardcore scene, so all the bands that we played with, uh, you know, down there, it was great to fucking see, you know, Lou and Sub-Zero and all them dudes again. Obviously, Isaac was there. And all those bands that we played with, Brick by Brick, who we'll see in Albany soon. Um, just you guys and you know I'm glad that uh, everybody's dealing with the shit we're dealing with and feeling as good as we fucking can right now um, I'm not going to get into a rant about vaccinations or not vaccinations I myself I'm fucking all boosted up but to each their own and uh, not nah, just uh, glad to see everyone still around fucking uh Cheers, and we'll see you guys around. Hey, uh, Stelios in Greece says, hope to see nuclear assault in Greece. Do you guys, is, is, is Greece a hot spot for nuclear assault? Well, uh, we haven't played Greece since I think 2003 when we opened up for Cannibal Corpse, believe it or not, in, mm. Ath in uh, Thessaloniki. I'm not sure if Stelios was old enough to be at that show or not. But, uh, oh, and uh, who do we got here? Um, cheers, dude. Um, yeah. Everyone's being very nice on the way out. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I mean, seriously, you know, I, I've i never, uh, I've always realized that I wouldn't be able to do all the shit I've done if people didn't care. So I never became no fucking uh, rock star. So, hey, you know what? You know what? I, I got to, uh, I got to give you a little, uh, a little props for, I, I really enjoyed the Anthrax documentary that was, that was, uh, Put up like in segments. I thought I thought it was pretty cool. I like how they spoke to everyone, including yourself and um, and what's his name, um, and Neil. Right? I, I like how they, they actually they went back and pretty much talked to everybody. I thought that was cool. Any thoughts on that Anthrax documentary? Well, that was certainly more informative and realistic than the uh, old behind the music they did back in two thousand one. If anybody sure. has seen that, but. Uh, no, uh, that's a little dig at those guys because that was a pretty funny story. I'm not going to get into here and now. Um, but anyway, uh, no, uh, I've talked to a lot of people who said, uh, well, you come off as very diplomatic and mature on that, Danny. I'm like, well, thanks. I'm fucking 57. Maybe I should. I've probably grown up by now. Um, no, uh, I thought that was well done. And I thought it was thorough and it was cool that they went back and spoke to uh, dudes 
who um, had participated in the earlier, you know, time of the bands before they got to like, you know, the big four shit and all like that. So um, I thought that was pretty cool and I appreciated being a part of it. Yeah, it was, it was, I thought, I thought it was pretty well done. All right, brother. Hey, hey, one more thing. Yeah. Up in Rochester. Am I remembering correctly from when I was on tour? Is there a place that has the garbage plate? Some food? Well, that would be Nick Tahu's. That's, it's been, uh, they kind of copyrighted what the garbage plate is. So there's lots of places you can get. They have to come up with names like the trash plate and other appetizing pseudonyms. But yeah, um, the garbage plate. I myself have you never. You know about this, Hoya? No. It's like, uh, it's like this. It's called, if I remember, it was, the, uh, it was called the garbage plate. I guess it, it was like this, this place when we were up, when I was with Biohazard up in Rochester or whatever. Maybe I was with Marauder or whatever. They give it to you on a paper plate. And it's just like ground beef, potatoes, vegetables, cheese. And they give it to you on this paper plate. And it's like this mountain of shit on this plate, man. And it's like home of the garbage plate. That's sweet. Yeah. What it is, is it's the equivalent to uh, White Castle, which is it only tastes good at 3 in the morning when you're shit-faced. <laughs> well, you know, they had one in, in Australia years ago when we were out there in a college town. I think it was in Adelaide, and it was called The Abortion. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. Any any of you Aussies out there, prove, let them know. Hit them Drew and let them know that I'm not bullshit. It was called The Abortion, and they went nuts. They were like... Only in Oz, only in Oz. Shout out wow. to Australia. That's, okay. that's, that's great. Insane. Great. Yeah. Right. Danny, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon, man. All right. See you guys. Peace out, yo. All right. See you, dudes. We love that guy, bro. Yeah, there's a lot of history right there in um, New yep. York hardcore and yep. being able – look at that, that picture. What I loved about that photo was um, not just – you know, obviously, Youth of Today drinking a beer, but a metal guy wearing a Youth of Today shirt drinking a beer because that picture says a lot that, you know, this, this crossover shit is not new, you know, with the hardcore shit. It's been there a very, 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 very long time now. So, you know. Well, you know, the, the thing is, with you know, that's a Queens dude right there. You know what I mean? That's like a Queens guy. I grew up with Craig Satari's brother yeah. and all that. And, you know, he, he was a, you know, he got a pass. You yeah. know, they, they talk about... You know those early days when, when it was when it was a little dangerous down yes. there at CBGB's. Yeah. Danny Loker got a pass. He grew up with Craig's brother and, and all. There was a couple of guys like that, yeah. you know. But you know what? Thank God because the face of music of our music would be different. No yeah, offense yeah. to the style you guys had, but it was like, it was more geared towards yeah. the punk rock aspect. Yeah, yeah. You know, we all came with the punk rock aspect meets the the metal shit. So Absolutely. thank God for guys like that. You know what I mean? So I was like, thank Absolutely. God for them to, to be yeah. able. Now we have the whole, hardcore has the whole umbrella from yeah. the garage to like the the, the 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 full stacks and whatever and still be under the hardcore umbrella. I right? mean, once in a while, I'll see some bandits repping like, you know, we're, 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 we're hardcore and I'll just scratch my head. I'll be like, huh? Yeah. I mean, that once in a while, I'm like, that, huh? You know but, what? I want to shout out Turnstile. Shout oh, out come on Turnstile. now. Bring it. Bring it. Listen, bring it. I want to shout out Turnstile, not just for killing it, dope album and the whole TV shit, but yo, those are real hardcore motherfuckers. They always represent where they come from. They always show love. And I always tell them, like, I hear hate. If you're hating on them, it's just, it's one thing that if you're not into it, you're not into it, but you can't hate on what's, on what's what. They're the closest thing. And I don't want to say the closest thing. You hear the roots. You can hear the, the, the way we come from in that it's just hands down Absolutely. and we should be rooting for them because when they open doors open the rest of us fucking come fucking through and shout out to turnstile that's all i want to say they just played on um not not the jimmy kimmel show but they just they just got had some had a big yeah. spotlight on them yeah oh yeah the night one of these night shows do you yeah. know i love it i love it yeah, that's good. And they're great, man. You, you know, like uh, a lot of bands uh, from that camp where um, uh, Mind Force, um, Regulate, uh, you know, uh, who else? You know, from that sort of. Listen, people could talk mad shit about this, about that. Oh, hardcore. Seth Myers. This, that's what it was. That. Seth Myers. Yeah. They were on Seth Myers. Yeah, go Listen, ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, it's just. 
you know, show love. When people are showing love to this thing of ours, we should be fucking embracing it, not trying to break somebody down because like it or not, those motherfuckers got roots in this shit. And yeah. you know what? I'm glad they fucking let the world know about it because I want the fucking planet to know about this shit of ours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not just not on some mad bullshit. Yo, we, we, we come from the greatest scene in the fucking world. I just, I feel that way. And I want the world to fucking know it. You know what I mean? I like this shot right here, brother. Boom. Squad I like this right one. there. A squad. <laughs> I, like, I like Fred. Beard. I like Freddy with the trick. <laughs> mad cool. beards in this picture. Yeah, right? What is this? Yeah, we got something for everybody, you know. A lot of white boys in the mix these days. You days. know, in Texas, I gotta roll a white. I gotta. If not, they'll deport me. They'll be like this Mexican. <laughs> throw them on the other side of that wall. It's Shut like up, white, the white boys are tipping the balance, man. Listen, you know, yeah, that, you got some, <laughs> but okay, Italians are they or are they not? Okay, that's another show. <laughs> it's a whole nother show. <laughs> Oh, that's oh. Hey, hey, your boy, your boy, bus driver Jay says, "Yo, you look like you need some awesome pizza from Flushing." Listen, I don't need diarrhea. I'm already did yeah. a fucking cleansing not too long ago. I don't need what, that. What's um? Give us a, give us a little bit of uh the Hoya um sort of uh, health regimen these days. The diet, the workout. What what what's going on, man? Yeah, definitely do not go to me for any health advice because mm -hmm. I'm learning as I go. <laughs> But uh, like I always say it, um, shout out to Adam Blake. Um, that's my go-to guy. Basically, I just try to eat clean. You know what I mean? Um, uh, um, um, I, when I, I don't eat a lot of red meat, I eat a, um, a lot of chicken breast, fish, and vegetables. And I work out every day, you know? Is and that it? You're working out every day now? Yeah. Like I basically go to the gym about four or five times a week. And wow. then, you know, I just try to do something. My whole thing is... Um, I learned the trick with, with this is, is, you know, a, a bad day in the gym is still the greatest day in the gym if you're not going. You know what I mean? And I learned that. And that little gym got me gains. You know what I mean? Yo, I'm not into it. Uh, you know, we can find excuse. You know when you're lying to yourself. You mm -hmm. know when you're lying, like making excuses for yourself. So my excuse is this. You know, my whole shit is, uh, I, you know, I do this for my son's. And my sons are thriving. So that makes me want to do everything 2.0. And that's my plan. Because I want to live as old as I could live. Because I want to see my sons live every fucking minute of their lives. So I have a lot of respect for you, man. You know, when 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 it came crunch time, you stepped up for your, your, your kids and your family. And, and yeah, it was very commendable, man. Yeah, yeah, thank you. But it's not even about that type. It's I know, I know. But but still, man, it's a, it ain't I don't easy, know any, any other way. I don't know any other way. So here we go. 2.0 everything. Let's fucking go. You know, I as long as my sons are good, I'm good. I got tunnel vision. My sons, if I, when I hear my sons singing in the other room to themselves, I know I'm doing good. So that's right. So just, far, just, so good. Thank God. Just a, just a quick a, a quick question from um, from Scott. Uh, how long do you work out for when you go to the gym? It's about an hour, but wow. you know, it ain't about an hour, everybody. You know, it just happens to be what I do is about an hour's worth now. You know, again, uh, real quick, I don't want to make this no fucking health episode, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I started with jogging in place for five minutes, and but I would do it every day. And right. then I learned, you know, five minutes, I would be five minutes dripping sweat. And mm. then I said, let me go for six minutes. Then I went for eight minutes. Then I'm doing 15 minutes. The next wow. thing you know... I was doing a half hour before I broke a sweat. Then I started adding a heavy bag. Then, you know, a long story short, when we did the comeback show in New York, I was yeah. weighing, I was 210 pounds at the time. I, I was over 350 before. And um, basically when, when I got there, I, I felt, you know, I was lost a lot of weight, but I felt a little weak, but I said, let me just start getting a little bit more size. So I've been lifting weights and I, and I, and I found therapy in lifting weights and um, that's where I'm at. I just go in the gym. Everybody, just do something. Move your body at least 15, 20 minutes a day and eat good and you'll be money in the bank. Simple. Just don't stop. That's the secret. You know what I mean? Don't stop. Good for you, man. Hey, uh, let, me, uh, let, me, let me shout out uh, some sponsors. and Let's take a minute 
And then oh. uh, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring Billy from from uh, Billy Bio on. Oh, yeah. um, so l- let me give me five minutes. Let me shout out these sponsors, and we'll be back. Okay. Boom. Come on now, it's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live holiday episode with my co-host Hoya Rock and a couple of guests. We already had Roger from Agnostic Front on. We had Danny Lilker. We had international superstar Danny Diablo, and we're about to bring on Billy Bio. In the meantime, let me shout out a couple of sponsors here, starting with Organic Grill. It's a vegan restaurant located in East Village, New York City at 123 First Avenue, featured in New York Magazine, New York Times, and Veg News. The dishes have won numerous awards, including Best Veggie Burger. Uh, They make their own cheeses, sausages, and burger patties, and every dish on the menu can be made gluten-free. This year, they're celebrating their 21st anniversary, and they're all about having a great time while enjoying amazing, clean food. They have now fully reopened for business and look forward to seeing you. Get in touch with them and order some great food at www.theorganicgrill.com. Also, DTFM Vinyl Distro is a record store that specializes in underground music, punk, ska, hardcore, metal, and more. Located in the heart of Fargo, North Dakota's Industrial District, shop in person or online at www.dtfmvinyldistro.com, where the motto is Death to False Metal. Want to mention a couple things real quick. Uh, the next four shows coming up on the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live got some real bangers. On the next show, Mr. Charlie Benante from Anthrax will be on talking about his love for Jaws the movie. This is going to be great. Should be really, really, really fun. Um, that said, after that, Sunday, January 9th, Jay Navarro from the Suicide Machines will be on the show. Uh, Wednesday, January 12th, Peter Leeds, a former manager of Blondie. And then Wednesday, January 19th, Gary G. Man Sullivan will be on the show. Also, I want to mention, we just announced this, that Sunday, April 3rd, all ages Free matinees are back on the Bowery. It is Rampage Fest number three, eight bands on two stages. So there you go. Uh, it's all getting, it's all happening, coming together now. Sunday, April third. There you go. Yes, co-hosted by Women of the Pit. That's right, Women of the Pit and the Back to the New York Hardcore Roots announcing. That said, that said, let me see. <laughs> Woo! Uh, there you go. Um, who am I missing? Uh, we're good. Uh, you know what? One quick, one quick shout out. Um, you know, I'll wait. I'll wait for our guests to come on. Here come, let me bring Hoya back on, brother. <laughs> what's up, what's up, what's up? I'm back. <laughs> and he's back. Hey, let's bring on a friend of ours. We love this guy, bro. I know this is a guy that we both have a long history with. And, uh, you know, his band Biohazard was usually usually, in, us, usually influential on, on our New York thing. Let's bring on our good friend, Mr. Billy Grazia Day. What's up? Hey, there we go. There What's we up, go. boys? What's Merry up? Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas. Happy Chinooka. Yeah. Happy Chinooka. <laughs> how's, everything, how's everything out west, brother? It's good, man. Good and cold, like the East Coast. How are you doing, brother? I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see no, you, brother. Man, good to see you over here holding it down. We, you know, doing this. Uh, Drew hit me up to, like, do this mashup, and I was like, what better reason to get together and, you know, see everybody and touch base and all that shit, so, but we good. We out here. Right on. Hey, let, let's, let's jump into the, let's jump into the present, Billy, and, and then we'll work back a little bit, but um, tell us about your new release that, that's coming out on uh, March 25th, right? March 25th, it's a second solo record under Billy Bio, and, uh, Filled with bangers. They just dropped a video. Uh, Toby Morse from H2O dropped on uh, 
Yo, it's zoom in, man. I'm fucking, it's been <laughs> Christmas with kids. I look exhausted. <laughs> fucking, uh, no, uh, Toby dropped some, um, spit on a song with me. It's called One Life to Live. It's a super fucking uplifting, powerful, uh, hey, let's PMA watch it. Song. Hey, you want to watch it real quick? It's just about Hoya. No, yeah, no. about me. I want to tell it. funny stories about Hoya. No, no, uh, no. Nah, let, nah. Let, let's, show, let's show a little, let's show a, a bit of your put new the, video because put I, that I, shit I can, on. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, he's trying to Go squirm ahead. out of it, Hoya. No, no, you put know? that shit on. Let's check it out. And the cover looks dope. Whoever drew that cover. Yeah, who drew that cover? Yeah, it's dope. That's the crew eyebrows. He's a he's a homie from New York. You, you guys know him, but he he goes by the crew the crew uh, eyebrows. Gotcha. He's a street nice. street artist. Good dude. Yeah, yeah cool, cool style. That was dope. All right. Who did this, Billy? So this is my my couple of buddies of mine uh, teamed up with me. And this dude, uh, Antoine, and um, I should know. I should have sent you the information. Um, and and uh, my friend, buddy Vince, from a band called The Art of Blondes. It's so it's a cool. It's a cool concept. Yeah. It's a party scene. It's one camera, bro, shot on my fucking iPhone on my iPhone, oh, and it was during the fucking pandemic. It's hard to fucking do. You know how the deal. You got to It's sure. you know. There's no budget, so you got your your fucking money shot is your idea. So it just. I wanted to show something that something different than I ever did before. I'm not even in the fucking video. I'm actually in the opening scene, but I'm. Are you? I, I I didn't see you. I could. I, I didn't see you either. It, it starts at the beginning when I'm walking up to the thing, but whatever. So, uh, um, it's uh, it's just a bunch of kids in fucking throwing a party during the pandemic lockdown where the most rebellious thing you could do is share beer and fucking kiss, <laughs> you know? And there's so, a lot and there's a lot of it. Let's watch the rest of it. I don't want to live my life compromised by others who seek control. Seek control. Standing by for your right to die. That we live. Standing on your own. It's all that we live. Standing by for your right to die. That we live. Standing by That's it. It's tough, Drew. I can't. Nobody can hear you. Hoya, Sorry. You're there. Well, well done, yeah. man. It's good. Yeah, Thank yeah. yeah. Where you uh, and, and that's the studio, right? Where it starts off. Is that right? start? Yeah, it starts out in the studio. Some fucking. Uh, I had a friend of mine over to the studio, and I played her some fucking music, and she recorded it and put the shit online, and so I I had to turn it around quick, and I we it was a we kind of got pushed to release the record in the news of the record sooner than later. But, uh, and then I put together a lyric video quick, drop that. And then while we were doing this whole shit was going on, I was working on this video and that was it. Oh yeah. Is it, and is that shot yeah. on an iPhone? You said shot on an iPhone, bro. Wow. Right. Crazy. Wow. 
Yeah. You know what it, had, it reminded me of in the, in the beginning of uh, that one scene in Point Break when they run, he homeboys running through the house and they throw a pit bull at him. <laughs> yeah, actually, it, it similar scene. But what gave me the idea was um, what uh, Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels. What's that? that too, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That yeah. too. That's because, more like Lock, Stock for sure. That was uh, what's yeah. his name? Um, uh, guy, guy, guy Ritchie. Guy, guy, guy Ritchie. Ritchie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole thing was. I want to show like um, just show like the regular day shit that goes on. The young kids, I love the fact in every generation, we all kind of assimilated to the part of, of each scene that was more like fuck the world, fuck society. I'm going to live it by how I want to live. And, and every generation, that YOLO kind of fucking mentality is what attracts. I always love that about the different generations. And now, you know, I, I got a little girl who fucking lives that, but, She's in the video too, but there's a certain quality to those. It's those individuals of, of every generation are the ones who are the movers and shakers, the ones who are going to make a fucking noise. And, and that's where the, all the stories, you know, took a little while to uh, come up with the ideas of, of writing about each person. But all these kids are all, they're all doing something at the beginning of their lives, you know, and they're just out in the world making, making a change and making some right. powerful shit. Yeah. And that that you produced you I'm assuming you produced the the new recording. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, he's a one man gang, of right? Of the studio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got it. I learned. You know what, bro? I, guys, I fucking watched what we did with Biohazard, and I all the money and the the shit that we spent on. No, no offense, Drew, because you made some great stuff for us. But a lot of the a, a lot of the things that I was spending my money on promo fucking little sure. video clips you you need content sure. i realized holy this is a lot of shit so i learned how to do all this stuff that's right i, I know how to edit i fucking make graphics with all my i'm super fucking fluid with illustrator and photoshop well, premiere well, well, well let me say that was a different era and it was a different time and even even, even yeah, when yeah. i did the two videos for for, for mad ball down by law and and pride back then we shot on film and you know yeah. nobody knew how to shoot on. It yeah. was a whole. It was like you got to crack the code. You, you like it was. It was. It was difficult. It was a process, you know. And yeah. and to to do that, you had to shoot on film. You had to develop the film. You had to do a film to tape transfer. It. it, it I mean, the technology now has made it so. So yeah. you, you, you know, every people can people can um, you know, do, do this stuff. And 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 I got to say that you know I know Paris Mayhew was watching before. I don't know if he still is. But but he was a huge um, influence on me as a filmmaker and the stuff that we did together, the the, the biohazard videos that, that he directed and 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 all that stuff that that, that we did. But yeah, th things have changed. I mean, you look at the video you just shot it on an iPhone. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's like uh, from tape back in the day to Pro Tools. You know what I yeah, mean? Right. It, it's get yeah. you gotta get with it. You know, yeah, <laughs> Billy, yeah. you remember? I remember when we were in the studio. Well, uh, for hey, some reason, fine. I think it was ninety. It might have been at A and M, but when they first brought had Pro Tools, and remember, yeah. you had to go home, right? It had to render for the night, and then we'd come home the next. We come back to the studio the next day and listen to it. And go now, we don't like it. Can we change? Can we change it? <laughs> we change yeah. it? Remember? Yeah, you, you know, I remember doing um, working on Urban Discipline, and all the all the um all the in-between stuff from the movie shit yeah, to the yeah. piano, all the like intros and outros. Yeah. I w it was on pro tools came out and they were, it was called sound tools. It was like a stereo thing at first and they had four tracks, but when it was stereo, it was during urban discipline and we were working at Chung King and I spent fucking days in the other room editing this shit. And, I, and I'd work on some, an idea. And I'd go in the other room and it would take fucking hours just for a fucking little 10 second little clip. And you know it changes. Oh yeah, you know that fucking it's so much. You make all your. Let me ask you this: You got any plans for any shows? Yeah, I just had. Um, I'm sure I, I I missed it. I was watching uh, taking care of some shit here for the wife, but uh, missed. It. But I think Roger jumped on. Did he yeah, mention yeah. anything? Did he mention what got canceled? Uh, no. No, you you're gonna mention it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you can't stop there, dude. Can't yeah. Stop it's, there. <laughs> it sucks, man. Europe, my records drop it in in, um, in uh, March 25th, and we had uh, the Persistence Tour in fucking. Uh, mm. So I was on that. I don't know who else was on that, but is uh, that whole thing canceled? Yeah, yeah, it's done. Oh, yeah, 
And then um, I had a big show here last Friday that got canceled, got shut down. We were doing a, a big benefit for the homeless. And, um, it, but it, you know, just, it's just fucking crazy out. world. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Hey, I want to I want to mention Paulie Porkchop says uh, in 1994 I saw Madball and se- and several other New York hardcore bands open for Biohazard at the Roseland Ballroom in New York City. It was the record release party for State of the World Address. And I have let me let me put this flyer up here. And I want to ask you, Billy, and, and then Hoya, you chime in as well. I mean, yeah. Biohazard back then would put their neck out and say no. We want local. We want we 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 want local up and coming bands on the bill. What what was the mentality and the attitude back then, Billy? <clears throat> all for one, one for all, man. It was that was a scene. We loved that. All these guys are fucking. Look at such a great fucking post. It was a great bill, man. <laughs> great fucking show. Yeah. And um, I remember we were trying. We kept at you know like telling Scott Coning, rest in peace. We're like, yo, could you throw these guys on? We want to throw these guys. We got to do it. <laughs> And it was like everybody got like 15 minutes. And yeah. it's, that's funny because the show that I just canceled Friday night, I did the same thing. We had 12 bands. Everybody got 15 minutes, we, even though we had to cancel it. But it was the same concept. And, uh, you know, a lot of bands um, – look at these. This is fucking – what yeah, a fucking – For, for Madball, this is a very important show for yeah. Madball history because this was the first <clears throat> big show in New York that we got to play like big dog show. Like, you know what I mean? Like, in, um, and, and a lot of people got turned on to us for the first time at that show. So I remember, and I remember, I remember everything very, very well. At that time, Biohazard probably would have sold that place out by themselves with none of the bands. And I remember when they put all the bands on, I was like, oh, man, you know, these motherfuckers putting everybody on. I knew then they didn't need all the bands. So... I always, I always specifically talk about this show, and I was like, I want to say again, shout out to you guys for always looking out because you didn't have to do it, but this one is when you know it gave all our bands the first time to be like, do the big dog shit, you know what I mean, to get a taste of that shit. So, yeah, very, very, very I remember that show perfectly too, man. It was a good time, crazy. Yeah, it's fucking wild. Was, Little was, look at that yeah. with many sets by <laughs> twelve bucks. Many bu- 12 bucks. That was whoa, whoa. Uh, 10 10 50. Advanced. In advance. Where's 12 bucks? What do you see? 12 hours. It says 12 right there under June. It says tickets, 12 dollars day of the show. Oh, day of show. Wow. He- <laughs> not a 50 of you late. And Yo, you guys- we are we're our old man. You know that uh, our old man used to say that. Yo, the gas used to be I know. Dollar. Listen, listen now, let me tell you one go one quick. The other day. I'm walking around my house in a robe, right, with a cup of coffee and my glasses <laughs> on the string. And I was almost vomited when I saw myself in the fucking mirror. I'm like, I'm a fucking 90 year old man. Bro, you look fucking great, man. God bless you. Yeah, you do. Thank you. Trying. Work in yeah. progress. Work in progress. Yep, hey, always, there, man. Hey, Billy, is there, is there a, um, is the record gold vinyl? What is a special limited edition of it? Yeah, so I got um. If you go to Linktree dot um. Yeah, here it is. Billy Biohazard. Yeah, you can. It's we got a bunch of limited edition stuff. There's a really cool one, the gold vinyl with a, a limited numbered um, lithograph, like art piece of the album cover included in the vinyl. It's pretty fucking dope. Um, and a bunch of other cool shit coming out. Oh yeah, good, good. Yeah. And uh, Hoya, what what are you guys doing? I'm. I, you guys already probably talked about it. it- no, no, I, I'm finding out as we go. I'm finding no, out. I'm putting day. up. I'm putting up flyers of his shows, and I'm. And he, it's news to him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, again, um, in this crazy world, there's we only got a couple sprinkle shows. I mean, there's mad shows. You yeah. know, festivals here, for, but you know, they're not happening. Europe's not happening. I, you know, I'm gonna do my Nostradamus and just throw it out there real quick. And nope, it's not happening. I, yeah, I yeah. wish, but let's see. You know. I've been wrong. Believe they're it or doing, not, they're doing a couple shows with uh, with Scott Roberts' band, The Take and Madball. Yeah, I just saw oh, these. Excuse, no, they are, excuse you me, know, they couple, are Madball. <laughs> we got a couple sprinkled shows. Like again, I'm, I just saw these with The Take and a couple with Powerhouse. So you know, wherever we could play, you know, we'll pop up. But um, everything is really um, here and there at the moment. So so we're just trying to you know do the other stuff. You know, just trying to keep busy with the 
writing music and every other angle of it. You know, I'm, you know, yeah, casting yep. and printing, you know, keeping busy. Yeah, nice. Here, here's an interesting question. Billy, is the new album coming out on cassette? Are people putting shit out on cassette these days? Yeah, that's a new it yeah, it's fucking dope. <laughs> um yeah, it's, 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 I, still, no, I, I have a cassette player in my car, man. You know, oh, I got a 97, you know. <laughs> when you start your car, you got to do it with your feet, like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> He's That's a killer. big player in my car. <laughs> I think there's no, like, so, like, as an engineer, there's no fucking sonic benefit to a cassette. It's horrible. None. But None whatsoever. The artwork's the smallest out of all the mediums. Yeah, everything about it fucking sucks, but it's so fucking dope. I want one. Yeah, nah, I don't yeah. hate on them. I don't hate them. So, Hoya, did you, did you guys do it? Fuck with NFTs yet? Yeah, we we were the first ones to drop one. All yeah. right, listen, yeah, we're we're the first ones to just fucking go in people's built and their windows and say, "Yo, listen, we got hardcore for you, motherfuckers." <laughs> <laughs> no, not, but we, yeah, we did a mad boy NFT. We got a couple things that we dropped before, and we got some yeah. shit. Yeah, that's still you know. Did it work? Like, like, people like it. You know, we're um, um new age gorillas. We're sophisticated gorillas. <laughs> nice. Hey, I got you know, I got. This hold on to sh just real quick, real quick. I just downloaded this. I did shoot this at the time, but yeah. this is this is that this is. Oh, oh, that's the show. This is this this is the that's show. At Roseland, I oh, I, I, I put it, wow, dude. You never saw this? I put it up never, a while ago. Ever, 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 ever. Yo, I had I had like three minutes of it. I found it on a tape. Like, whoa, what's this? Oh shit! Wow. Wow. There we go. There. There. Hat. like this. No, that was epic. <laughs> Lozenges. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yo, yeah, that's killer, never, bro. I've never seen that shit. Wow. Bro, you know my shit goes deep. Oh, I know that. That shit just went real. It came out my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was dope, bro. I didn't know you had that. Wow. Nice. Yo, I got the, you know, I got, you know, I got a box of biohazard. No, that's that's <laughs> high eight tapes. That's personal history. And again, uh, thank these guys. Again, that show, you know, that, that, those, uh, that show was important for all those bands. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Hoya, how long you guys were together before that show? I, I, as, that, as that lineup. Oh, I'm like, I joined the band in 93. So like so they they did like the dropping many suck. It was still kind of yeah, you know, just yeah, kind of yeah. on fun. But like I think when we did it officially, ninety three was like okay, 93. we're gonna be a real band and get you know and really do it. So yeah, ni ninety two, ninety three ish, you know, right yeah. after that. So I don't remember what year was that show, Drew. Ninety five. Ninety five, right? That was the that was yeah. the um the release for for State of the World Address. That was Biohazards. Oh, that was Biohazards. Home show celebrating the yes. release of State of the World. It was a blockbuster, man. I remember. I remember. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. We were probably around three years before that, probably. Yet. Like, yeah. Nice. For me. Hey, know. Billy, what's going on with the uh, Power Flow? So we got a new record. We just finished it, and uh, it's about to be mixed. Yeah. Um, begin the new year. It'll come out. Uh, who knows? <laughs> yeah, right. With, with COVID, you got it. You know, it's a, <laughs> it's a crapshoot these days. You know. Yeah. But I it's think. done. It, it's yep. fucking dope. It's it's uh, it's more like it's our second record. So everything that we liked about the first joint, it's kind of like crack cocaine out and, and purified. So uh, it just sounds more like a seasoned band, you know. 
I think the second record of every band, it, it gives you a chance to go on tour together, yeah. to really feel each other out, and, oh, yeah. and, and the cream rises to the top. And what's the lineup of, of the, the second album? Uh, so it's Christian uh, Sendog and I, and then our boy Fred on drums. It's a solid foundation of the, of the band. Yep. And then um, we're still looking for a, a lead guitar player. Got it. No. Makes, makes sense. Yeah, yeah good, good, good lineup. You know, I got to shout out real quick, your boy, Hoya. Um, this is, I got to shout out Brick by Brick, Cutthroat 7-inch. All, all uh, day, always. You know I what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Both of them. Yep. yep. Upstate Rangers. Finders. Yep. That's a dope one. That's a fucking great record. Brick by Brick's Brick hard, by, yo. Yo, they got um they got Chuck Billy from Testament on that track. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now yeah. a lot of bands and even you young bands, you gotta fucking really take some notes because these motherfuckers are grinding, both of them. What yeah, I mean by are. grinding is not just, oh, we dropped some music. Like, they're playing shows. They're dropping fucking material out. They're dropping content out. This shit's like, you know what I mean? This, it's, it's a lot of work to do. And especially now when there's not a lot of help. You know yeah. what I mean? So to like, and they're doing it. And I know because I, I'm always watching on what's what. And it's dope to see that. You know, not just because that's the fam right there. But they're, they're doing what you're supposed to do. When you got something that you believe in and you back, you know, baby. Yep. All out, yeah. you put the whole shit into it. You're like, you don't got, you can't get the money. Well, you make it happen. Yeah, you know? I just finished. I just finished producing the new Cutthroat record, yeah. and oh, that's that right? fucking killer. Yeah, it's not out yet. We're we're shopping for a deal, but it it's fucking what a banger. Yeah. Fucking wow. yeah. No, so yeah, so doing it. Mike Valente, Upstate Black and Blue. They work hard. Black, uh, brick by brick is a hard working band, man. Yeah, listen, upstate yep. even them. What they do for forget just again the fam. What they do for heavy music. What he does yeah. for heavy music and that area, man. People don't understand. They got shows because you know he's not the, the, just that big gorilla that I love. But you know people just think he's like <laughs> oh the, he does a lot for heavy music, not just hardcore, but hardcore metal, everything punk in, yeah. in that area, and it's. You know, I, 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 for me, I'm always, I'm so personally, I guess I'm surprised and I, and I love it too. Cause he's like, it's dope. Yeah. You know what I mean, he, he loves that shit. You know what I mean? Jacob, Jacob Mike. asks, Jacob, Jacob asks, uh, did Cutthroat, did Cutthroat play Persistence with you, Billy? Yeah. We, they played it, uh, the last one when it shut down right before things shut down. Got it. Yep. Yeah. And then, uh, also this band, new band I produced called Count Time. Um, oh, yeah, another band know. that re that yeah. record's fucking. Well, those are you, those too. are you those are your boys, right? Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. that's fam yeah. right there. Yeah, dude. yeah. We I, we played with them. We just played with them out uh, in uh, in Long Beach. And just yeah. for the record, they that's were junior, born, right? Born that's in junior? America. Okay, they right. didn't sneak over. They were born here, Drew. <laughs> that's junior. Shout right? out to Count Time, Viva Mexico. Right. <laughs> yep. There you go. And rest in peace, Vicente Fernandez, man. Yep. Hard one. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin says, I always feel motivated to create something when Billy Bio talks. That's good. Oh, yeah. There you go. Good. <laughs> you're, 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 come, and make it with, come and make it with me. I'll make it fucking dope. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah we might have to, might have to uh, come out there. You know what? You know what? You guys, you guys might appreciate this. Uh, I got to, you know, I want to announce this show here. On Sunday, February 27th, we have coming on the show, it is the Castle Heights 20 year reunion. And uh, Ke Kevin Kevin Castle Scandato. Uh, <laughs> did Biohazard ever play Castle Heights? No, no, my Biohazard did. I think you were kind of no. already like. Yeah, and I don't think Madball did either. To be no? honest, maybe once, maybe, but we've we've no. ended yeah. up there a couple times because the old house, um, thirty one forty, the old Scarhead house was a couple blocks from there. So that was a hot spot, Castle Heights, man. Yeah, that was all. I grew up in that neighborhood across the street. Yeah. Like, you know, right. like 15 years old, like crazy. That they ended up being a hardcore club there years later. Yeah. yeah it is cool. a, uh, there's a, um, a memorial for Scott Koenig a week from tomorrow that I'll be going to here in oh, New York. Get out of here. Yeah. Man. Nice. Yeah. East Coast represent. Yeah. Nice. East Coast Scott Koenig, man. You know? Hell yeah. Shout out to Scott. That's hell yeah. Yeah. I miss him, man. You know, he was, uh, yeah. He was our guy for a minute too, you know. We got that again. The buyer has a connect, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was uh 
he was a part of it. He, he really, yeah. yep. He was. He was. I, big... I, I love that. I was saying, yo, Mad Boy was on Rush. Like, fuck, yeah. you, know, you know that shit back in the day, Rush. You know, and Run DMC, Slick. You're like, yo, Rush. What? Yeah. 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 That still impresses people when I, I meet new people and they're like, you know, they, they hear about Biohazard. And I'm like, yeah, we were with Russell Simmons, Leo Cohen, and Scott Coning. Um, at, uh, they're like, Rush Management? I'm like, yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, no yeah. shit. That's when labels were labels. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Rush. And you remember to have a Rush jacket? That was like, oh, no, forget it. That, that was a shit. See? Or like yeah. Russell Simmons, you know? That was like a big deal. Like, crazy. Yeah. I, was just at, I was at that show last week in L.A., it was the, the fucking I biggest hip hop. I saw it. Yeah, tell us about wild. it. Tell us about it. So we were, um, we, we had tickets and uh, we went with the whole group of us and it was fucking, we're watching Al Green, who was fucking amazing. And after Al, we saw it, Snoop, uh, Snoop didn't play it. We saw um, Ice Cube. Wow. And then after Ice Cube was, was uh, Al Green. And we're hanging out in this fucking tent area that's above the crowd. And after, right at the end of Al Green, I see this fucking commotion going on, be, you know, behind backstage, and I'm look. I said to my boy, I'm like, "Yo, that that ain't, that ain't good, man. This fucking that don't look good." And I got a fucking bad feeling, and I sure enough, fucking shit was blowing up, and and that was it. The show was over, and then they didn't say nothing to the crowd, and it was two different crews, and they fucking took out um, uh, Draco. Oh, and Draco, fucking, that was that thing. Oh, yeah, that, that was yeah. that thing. They, they, oh, they, I yeah. didn't know. Oh, I just heard about that. He got yeah, stabbed up. I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Right and, back. And that was right it. Show was over. Stage. Right. Right. It behind the stage. Right backstage area. Yep. Right backstage. Wow. Yo, there, there was, and it was, it had like a mad street vibe. Huge festival. Like, in the on the main stage, it was probably like sixty, six, maybe sixty thousand people there, and. <clears throat> But the fucking security, like, there was no security there. I'm, I, I, I'm walking around like, yo, this is fucking. I don't see anybody. Just mad people. No fucking safe. There's like no like. There, it's just like full on street vibe. It was it was dope, well organized. But the security vibe side of it, I remember th walking in saying, this, this, this is this ain't, this ain't right, man. You would but, think after that Travis Scott <clears throat> shit, people be <clears throat> yeah, right. Yeah, and it, it wasn't, man. You know, I'm not going to diss the dudes, the organizers, but I, I remember when that shit went down, I said to my, my old lady and, and my friends, I'm like, yo, we should get out of here. This ain't, this shit's going to blow up. Like, no, not, you know, my wife's like, were, no were way. You, were you in front of the stage? Or or that, we stage? We were, they had a VIP, like a VIP tent that we scored uh -huh. tickets to. And we, so we were up above, in, um, it, 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 in front of the stage. But so, but we, we had like an eagle eyes view. We were sure. like above, the stage stage yeah. so the, we could see everything we saw the whole shit fly down you know behind the stage and uh um, it was pretty ill and then so you know my old lady's like i, I ain't leaving i want to see snoop i want to see the oh, game shit. i want to see i want to see 50 cent and i'm like babe we gotta get the fuck out of dodge just this shit's gonna blow up i don't want to be in the mix you're dragging your ass out of here so by the time we end up leaving Sometimes, sometimes you gotta override your women, man. Once in and a listen, while, you know? women will be the hardest soldiers, but they will get you killed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. So we ended up, you know, we it was all good. Just we didn't get to see anybody wanted to see, but in in the light of the the uh, circumstance, you know, rest in peace to yeah. Drago. Hey, let's yeah, absolutely. Um, let's. I got to take a break, and and we'll come back and t and take some. Uh, some some questions and, and, and we'll continue on. So let me let me do a last sponsor break and we'll see you guys back. We've got a couple of good questions here and we'll see you back in about five minutes. Okay. Go. Cool. Come on now, you know what this is and you know why we are here. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records, and Skateboards, DTFM, Vinyl Distro, Chachos Tacos, and. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay in the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as T-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used records collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on Facebook or on Instagram. Come on now. 
Chacho's Tacos, located in Corpus Christi, Texas. Chacho's Tacos opened their doors in 2001, home of the almighty Chacho's Taco. They cook up an incredible homestyle Tex-Mex food, and this month they're celebrating their 20th anniversary. They've been supporting underground music since the beginning, and in their own words, we ain't stopping anytime soon. Touring bands that play Corpus Christi swung by and get a home-cooked meal at Chacho's Tacos. We got you. The underground scene will never die. Please follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. Let me get through these. Hang with me. Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, located in Lakewood, Colorado, is the Rocky Mountain headquarters for all things punk, hardcore, and metal. Established in 2014, the year of our God, in 2014, they have the largest, they have the largest selection of records, CDs, shirts, stickers, patches, and accessories between Chicago and LA. From the pit to the ditch, they got your back. Get in touch with them at www.chainreactionrecords.com. The Texas Silver Rush is a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. The client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers Greg Rollet, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. During this current pandemic, all information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. Last but not least, New York Hardcore Comics. Opened in 2013, selling comic books, punk rock, and hardcore memorabilia, toys, statues, skateboard decks, tapes, vinyl, and all things horror. We love helping bands push their demos and new tracks, so please stop by and drop off your new music. We have in-store events like Magic the Gathering and Warhammer tournaments, plus meet and greets with bands and some live performances. Open seven days a week and shipping worldwide. Find us online through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and eBay. Located at 117 Main Street in Dobbs Ferry, New York, www. New York Hardcore Comics.com. Quickly want to mention the next, next four shows. Let me clear the deck here. The next, next four shows got a couple of real bangers coming up. Wednesday, January 23rd, BMX legend Rick Thorne will be on the show. Wednesday, February 2nd, Mark Weiss Guy Weiss, photographer celebrating his best selling book, The Decade That Rocked. A couple of photographers coming on the show. Wednesday, February 9th, legend Ed Culver. Of course, you might recognize his work. He shot the photo that's on Black Flag Damage, the TSOL, Bad Religion. This is going to be a great one. And, of course, Sunday, February 13th, my homegirl Dora Pesh will be on the show. So that's going to be, that's going to be a blast. That said, want to mention... What a mention coming up free in at the Barry Electric. We're doing our free matinees. That said, Sunday, January 16th is a big banger featuring Lenny and Fahrenheit 451. 24 7 spies. Yo, I got to bring these guys on and ask about this. How about, yo, how about that, bro? 24 7 spies, huh? Yeah, fucking awesome. How crazy Grandma's is that? dynamite. What's that? Grandma's <laughs> dynamite. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we, we're doing these free matinees, man. And, you know, either of you guys are welcome. If you ever want to play a surprise show or something, we're doing these free Sunday afternoon matinees down on the Bowery, half a block, a block from CBGB's. And uh, they've been going great. They've been going Fuck great. Fuck yeah, dude. And then this one here, we are doing a High in the Mighty reunion show. Uh, you know, Zum is playing bass, and uh, Sub Zero is headlining High in the Mighty reunion with Murderers Row. Speaking of upstate New York, Black and Blue, Dark Side, NYC, and Skitopolis. Oh. So we're doing it here in New York City. Hell yeah, hell yeah, that's dope, man. Hey, you know what, Hoya? Let me ask you about this. What is going on in the Casa de Rock? What, what's the latest, man? Boom. $15. I, that's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I got to make room for the new. Everybody knows how I get down. I'm a one-man gang, and I like keeping shit fresh and sexy. So go right now. If you live in America... CasaTheRock.com, 
I want to get rid of everything. I don't do international because they charge too much at the moment. But yeah, I, I do something for next year. But you could go to CasaDeRock.eu for my Europe stuff. But anybody who wants to support the the Smoking Word podcast or me, you got my Patreon up there or cop a T shirt. But um, and shout out to everybody who has been supporting me because people have been holding me down, especially my Patreon family for real. You know how that goes, Drew. I do. They keep these things going, and when we say that shit, we mean it because uh, shit costs money. And if you haven't heard right now, um, for people that do music for money, there's not much music going on. So any help to keep this, like I tell people, all these avenues, we're the news channel for our, our world. You know what I mean? And um, and while we still got control of it, let's keep supporting it. You know what I mean? So. Absolutely, Billy. How's your Patreon going? It's fucking going dope, man. I did a really cool thing. Um, I'm going to release it to the public now, but they, they say everybody watched me. Um, I documented the writing of a couple of different songs on the record. And one of the songs ended up being that first single with Toby, One Life to Live. Cool. So there's a, there's a, you know, it took over. It, it, the whole thing went on for like a year during the pandemic, me sitting with acoustic. And, and it's like all these videos of me like stumbling onto the riffs and then just piecing different riffs together and then going to the studio and then putting it together with guitars, bass, and drums. And then the song evolved. And then, uh, and then I finished it and put the last episode up. It was like five episodes. Um, so they all got, that was like a pretty cool thing showing them like behind the scenes to the creative side of what I do. Um, a bunch of all the stuff that I do. You, you work it. You, you, you really work your Patreon, man. You, 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 you put up a lot of, of, of fresh stuff. It's, it's hard for me, man. I do so many shows. I got so much going on. I, I don't have, I can't, it's hard for me to get something on Patreon in between. But that, but that's your, but that's what your Patreon, you know, gets. I get pre, you know, I'm a member of your Patreon and yeah. boy, I got to join yours brother. But um, one of the things that I, I like about my Patreon is I, I want to give people a look into the create, my creative side yeah. that nobody else sees. That's it. You know, cause they're, they're going to get the music like everybody else gets, but I want to show you, the other stuff, you know, and then I, I've, I have a, do have a series called Tales from the Hard Side, which is it's not like a podcast. It's kind of like me. I just tell my stories and I got a funny story. I got I got a call. I, I shouldn't even talk about this, but um, don't I, fuck, I, don't, don't. I always I always tell my story. I know I can't. You two, you're going to drag everything out of me. <laughs> but um, I tell the stories of fucking and I, you know, I got like I'm up to like episode 50 or something like that. But it's just. Everything from like one story I told about how Lars Urge dissed me in front of a bunch of friends once. And I, so I ran after him. I go, what the fuck? And they're like, don't do nothing. It was at their club in fucking on the West side, somewhere in Manhattan. Oh, it was at the, it was at the marquee. No, not the marquee. What it was Sasha and those guys. Remember them? Oh, oh, it was at, um, yeah. Um, area, not area. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I know the place. It'll come to me. It I was can't right, remember. Even it was right on Seventh Avenue. What was that place? Yeah, um, not the cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't remember. Used to, but we used to hang out there a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it was fucking dope. So, hoy, it's fucking funny story. The fucking not so, the academy. No. We're we're hanging outside and we're bullshitting, and they're like, "Yo, here comes fucking Lars walking down the street," and and like you know you know him. I'm like, "Yeah, I know, motherfucker." So he comes walking down. He's got like ten people with him. And I, he, he walks right past me, and I'm like, yo, what's up, bro? And he looks at me, gives me like a what up with the head, and walks past me. And my boys are like, yo, fuck, he don't know you. He just told this. I'm like, fuck that motherfucker. I fucking beeline it, and they're like yelling behind me, don't do nothing. I'm like, fuck him. He fucking knows who the fuck I am. So I go up to VIP. I push my way through. I walk through the crowd, and I spin him around. I'm like, yo, bro. I said, Billy fucking Biohazard, you know who the fuck I am. You just dissed me in front of my boys. And he's like, yo, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you with your blonde hair. I was like, yo, yeah. I always have my fucking hair blonde. Bro. <laughs> so he makes a look. Anyways, this is a story I tell on Patreon. And that this tour, what happened was the story goes on. It's pretty crazy. But the next day, Scott Conan calls me up and he says, yo, so I, I hear you bump into fucking uh, – <laughs> Lars Ulrich last night. I'm like, I'm like, here I go. Here we go. He's going to fucking, you know, I'm, he's going to fucking scold me like my old man. So he's like, I don't, and I start telling the story. He's like, all right, all right, all right. 
I don't, I don't know what you did or what happened, but they want to take you on tour. Ah, and I'm like, ah. what? <laughs> no fucking way. Fuck. And this picture, that, that's a great picture. I just posted this the other day. Oh, that's the, the photo from that tour. Um, and it was the last night of the tour. And I tell some funny stories about the tour and some crazy shit that happened. That's but uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's the other side of my Patreon. That's dope. That's dope. That's crazy. I did not have how many shows you did with them. I don't remember, but I remember uh, now. You see, you guys, you guys are fucking great fucking journalists, like it's <laughs> interviewers, because you you pull out the shit. I don't want. I'm like trying to get people to go sign up to my Patreon. Everybody gets the whole story. Sign up to your Patreon because you know they're right now on Patreon right now signing on to mine, and they're like, oh shit, Billy's is here too. So <laughs> here, and my Luke since I'm rich because I know there's a few guys with good jobs out there. You know, just keep hitting. So, you stay on there. There's a couple of us on there. The last show of the tour, they invited us on stage. And uh, and from what I heard, they never did that before. Like, we were either the first band or one of the first bands that they ever allowed to come on stage to jam once they got mega fucking huge. And and at that time, those dudes, they I can't remember with a record. It was like Load or something. I don't remember the era. But or what record they were releasing. And you could talk shit all that you want about their records, but live, those motherfuckers brought it. And I was like, wow. So yeah. the last show was in Holland, I think at Donington. Uh, fucking what's that show? Um, Dynamo. Dynamo, right. right. And they bring us, they, they, they tell us during the day, their people come up and they're like, yo, the guys want to bring you on stage to, to play, you know, do a song with that. We're like, what? No fucking way. Das was a big metallic fan. He's like, bro, this is fucking massive. I, they don't do this. This is not normal. So we go up and we did we did creeping death with them. And Das and I are on fucking Kirk Hammett's mic, and Kirk's right in between us, and James is over the, you know, right in the center. And um Evan and Danny and um bass player, fucking good dude. Um, can't remember his name. Fucking Jason. who's the bass player? Newstead. Jason Newstead. Newstead? Yeah. Yeah. So he, he's on stage right. And we're, we go and we're fucking singing the song, and all of a sudden, somebody fucks up and they start singing the chorus too soon. And James looks at me, I'm like, <laughs> and I look over it, and Evan's white as a ghost, and Evan fucked it up. James is like, like mad and down, and I'm like, look, this is one of the oldest fucking metallic songs, and you fuck it up? What the fuck? So, that's some fucking go. funny shit. Um, know your shit. Hey, Thomas asked this question. I did not know this. Can Billy comment on making background vocals to Agnostic Front One Voice in '92? Is that right? And yeah, Thomas. I did not. Germany. I did not know that. I bet you he's from Germany because he says, "Oh, Billy making background vocal on <laughs> AF One Voice." Yeah. So here's the deal. Um, it was at um, what, uh, Rhode Island. Had what was that dope place in Rhode Island? I'm, uh, Normandy. 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 Yeah, Normandy we never sound. got a chance. Yeah, we, we never got a chance to record it. But I remember all you guys would, would go there and record and come back with this great sounding fucking record. You're like, yeah. what the fuck? We got to go here. But um, yeah, we did. We flew up. We flew up. We drove up and uh, did it. But I, I didn't make it. I can't remember what happened. I had some kind of family emergency and and I couldn't go. But the rest of the guys drove up, and I remember hearing the record. I'm like so bummed that I didn't sing on the record. So to answer your question, bro, no, I didn't. It's not my particular voice, but Biohazard, we did it. So whose voice, Great record. Is, on, whose voice is on there? Pavarazzi. The guys, uh, Evan and Bobby and Danny all ah, drove up. Got it. Yep. Okay. Barrage Film says, great show. Respect from Argentina. Hoya, you guys are loved in Argentina. I huh? love Argentina. Biohazard, too. You know, let me. Argentina in general loves um, heavy music with flavor. Yeah. You know, what you, I mean, what you want me to do? They add the, we, we, we do angry the best and we do flavor the best. Just it is what it I, is. I think any city, any any country that's go, got that battles for tough times loves heavy, hardcore, fucking real music. You know, for sure. Bro, 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 Drew, we got stories. <laughs> we, I w remember when we went to. Fucking Argentina, Billy. That was that was incredible. Uh, my 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 first my first just one memory of Argentina was we flew over there on a pretty much empty plane. I remember everyone had like a row, and we it was like a really good flight. Yeah. And we show up at the airport, 
And we come out of the airport and all of a sudden this big cheer erupts and there's all these people cheering. And we're like, we look we're looking, us, like, we're looking behind us like, who are they cheering for? And it was like a hundred kids at the airport to meet biohazard. Yes. That was all those that kids was, keep it real, man. Fuck you. Wow. It was, hey, it was Buenos Aires. America's like that. Like they live that shit. You know, we talk about we live it, they live yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Shout out yeah. to the to the savages down I, there. I can't wait to go back there, man. Oh, that, 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 that was it was incredible. Uh Christy Andrew says I'm not allowed to, actually I'm I'm not allowed to tour in Argentina without my wife. Uh, my wife's Brazilian. Oh, she, she knows. knows. <laughs> she knows. She knows. <laughs> She's smart. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. shout out to Bi- Poland and Ireland. Listen, yeah. wherever Biohazard and Mad Boy is like the same type of gorilla, you know, that, 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 <laughs> that the DNA of that Java oh. Man slash Pro Magnum mix. That's great. <laughs> this is a weird question. Uh, for each question for each of you, if you could have participated in one historical recording, what would it be? I don't know. I mean, oh, mm. I'd I play feel- fucking a tambourine on one of the Temptation songs. I'll be happy with that. Like just to be down, just to be in the room with Jameson, I'm, I'll be good. Yeah. I don't. I'll go next. I don't like being in a recording studio. That's not my thing. Like it, I, Billy, it's your thing. You love the recording studio, yeah. and you guys had a lot of patience. But I was there for a couple of a couple of great ones, and, and I, I, I must say, probably the. The, the 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 greatest one that I was really a part of the whole time would be Biohazard State of the World Address. I was there for that whole thing. I documented the whole thing. Yeah. And 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 that was that was probably you know with my limited amount of patience that that was that was incredible. And and also you know it was recorded in A and M Studios in the room where they did We Are the World, right? So it was poor of, you, yeah, poor you, yeah. <laughs> Billy, like what, what about you on the planet? For me to play on records, um, I don't know. I love being in the studio, but to, I would have to go with Hoya and, and pick some classic. I'm going to go with fucking... Oh, yo, you, you know what's fucking dope? You guys see the fucking Beatles? The new Everybody, Beatles? Matty Matty I haven't Anderson seen it. I haven't that. seen it. He says, Matty Anderson made me. He said, you better go see it. Matty said that? Bro, yep. Bro, guys, yeah. it's you watch these dudes who you know well. First yeah. of all, the image of them being clean cut well-spoken dudes is all manipulated by the people behind them because you see these dudes just like us regular dudes talking shit cursing drinking smoking fucking they're just like real like there's no guarded um image that they're trying to pretend to be and you watch them stumble over not stumble you watch them like dance around these ideas that you know um so well with some some classic beatles songs because i think the record ended up being um, let it be that exactly. they were making. Maddie was telling but me they, that the songwriting part is ridiculous. It's unbelievable because they're singing words. I'm like, yo, John, that's not the fucking word. No, <laughs> it's this. Yeah, and I got he it. He doesn't say it. And then eventually, like a week later, he changes it to something else. It's close, but not the same. They mix words around. I'm like, it's so fucking amazing. I'm yeah, I got, I got it. I got, I got it. I got to see it. It's on Disney, right? <laughs> I think it's on the. I think it's on the Disney Channel, right? Disney Plus, yeah. You, you, you know, I, I heard that about that. Is that uh, McCartney and and that they weren't happy with the original footage because it's all it show. All they took was the drama of them breaking up and fighting. And now that they've Peter Jackson, who directed the Lord of the Rings and King Kong and all that. He went yeah. back to a lot of this footage, of course, has never been seen before, and he kind of put it out there really the way it was. Those guys didn't hate each other's guts while they were recording that. You know, they, no. they, they were still had respect for each other and, 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 and uh, you know. Yeah, there's was, there was this one great scene where, where um, George Harrison quits, and they all talk about him, and they all make a plan to go over to his house. Uh-huh. And, they don't, and they, there was one thing they did. John and Paul come back after meeting with um, with Ringo and, and George Harrison. And they, they they didn't want to talk to the camera, so they hit a fucking microphone in this catering area by the studio, and they record John and Paul talking about the shit. I was like, yo, that's fucking sly. That's fucked up. Yes. But, and they kept it in the fucking movie. And then you see Yoko Ono. I don't want to ruin it, but go check it out. It's yeah. fucking bad. Here, here's, uh, here's one from uh, our good friend, RS70. Uh, who does, who's a big graffiti uh, historian who says, 
Were any of you jerk-offs going to shows before you were rock stars? Now, I could testify for this. I know both these guys. Of course, man. Billy, Billy, you, you, of course. We all went to shows before, you know, right? Billy, what were some yep. of the earliest shows you went to? Lemore's, right? Hold on. Hold on. No, way before that. But um, first of all, let's back it up a little bit. Before we came, we ain't rock stars. Thank you. Metallica, those Hold are on. Rock stars. Thank you. I was going to wait for you to say something because you know, <laughs> I want to I want to check that real yeah. quick, but I'm glad you yeah. said that. So, so I, I, I remember, um, I think maybe the Ramones, but I saw, I remember, I saw um, the first incarnation with Richie of underdog play and that shit was fucking, that's when I was like, Richie wasn't in the band. It was Carl. Sorry. Remember Carl? Yeah, of course. Car Carl, Ma Carl Mosher. Yeah. So yeah. Richie was out and Carl came in. They, they sang a song called True Blue. I saw him and I'm like, holy fuck, this fucking madhouse. And it was badass. It was in Albany, New York. And and Hoya, what were what, what, like first <clears throat> first sort of? No, no, no. Yeah. Um, what was the question again? I just that rock star shit threw me off because like, um, what, did you <laughs> did you go to shows before you were in a band? Okay. I, well, of course. You know. Um, I think um that's the great thing about hardcore. Um, that you you know you go to it and you're like I could do this, yeah, and, yeah. and and usually you're going with friends and you do it for that reason to do you know to kind of do something with your friends and to be able to go to the play in front of these like-minded people. But um, the, with that rock star thing, I just wanted to say like, um, it's something that goes in our music scene and I know it, tr it translates different to different people. And, uh -huh. and, and we've got personal friends that use that and that's cool and all that. But us personally, Madball, I can speak for Madball only. We don't use that word at all because we sleep on floors at airports. So when I hear rock star, I don't think of that. So, um, you know, um, yeah. we are motherfuckers that play in the band. And again, I ain't saying that shit on some, <clears throat> oh, the, the, the trend. I'm a grown ass man. I don't need no points. Everybody knows how we do. But um, for us, that was too much of a buzzword that um, nothing against it to whoever rocks with it. But uh, for us, it's kind of like, you know, we're the working man band. You know what I mean? And we good with that, you know, with that. Yeah, you know, so. yeah. I, I think. Um, working I class think hero. Yeah. yeah, I think he's just being a little cheeky. Uh, he, I know, he's, a I big, know. I, he's a big supporter of the show. Good dude. Like I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. But, 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 but it instigated a good conversation, which yeah. we appreciate. And I know what they meant because I, I, there's always there's a convo with that in general. Like I had it with other friends. Like, what's the definition of a rock star? Yeah. Like, to me, it's a rich dude. And they did, and they go, no, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with music. You know, again, so it's you know, it's in our world, these are convos that the musicians have or yeah, yeah. may have, or especially in our worlds that we linger in between worlds. You know Yo, shouting mean? out Pugsy out in Jersey. What's happening, man? Oh, Pug, yeah, hell yeah. Shout out to fucking a dirty Jersey. You know yeah, what's right? Up. For sure. Yo, I just did a, I just did a track. I'm working with the guys in Concrete Dream and uh, they're from Dirty that. Jersey. Young we got Isaac on the track too. It's fucking killer. Oh yeah, right. he, he was, uh, that's what he was talking about when he was on. Yeah, there he you was go. Just, he was on before he was talking about that. Um, yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> yeah, but that's good to have the young young guns out there doing some music, and you know, and and you know, full circle. You know what I mean? Like you know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Andrews says, "Hoya, what's the definition of hardcore? Something to do with airport?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they do. Now you know this is meeting a hardcore right here. Yeah. Like minded people talking <laughs> shit about other like minded people. That's what. Uh, hardcore is about. That's great. Oh, Pugsy says, yo, he lives in Long Island now. All right. Uh, yeah. I think of Jersey. I think of you, Pugsy. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, there you go. Yes, Axl Rose is a rock star. That, that's for sure. Billy, you remember when, when, when you guys were doing State of the World Address and Slash and uh, those Guns N' Roses guys came in and lis listened to the Biohazard stuff? Do you remember that? Yeah. It was a it. crazy, crazy I time. It. I, I have remember. it on video. I, you do? I do. Yeah, that's killer. I remember at that phase of, of the time with the band, Evan was fucking loving that shit, and it used to fucking bother me because I'm like, I remember one time I was playing guitar and, and this dude comes over and stands over me while I'm tracking, and I look up and he's got long black hair and was J Christ, uh, what's his name, Slap. John Christ from Danzig, the guitar oh, player. Remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, 
can I help you? And he's like, oh, I'm just checking your play. Fucking pretty good, which I wasn't I fucking good. I'm just struggling through, fucking trying to rip through my riffs. But I, it bothered me. I wasn't about that, man. And I know, you know, to, if you, it, the, the rock star whole shit and that trip, to me, it's all about being in a van. I fucking love it. Which Send Dog and I have had some great success in our career, him way more than me. But with Power Flow, like Hoya said, you slug it out. You start a new band, you go out, you stay in a fucking van. You share hotel rooms and you fucking yeah. sleep in fucking benches at a fucking airport. It, it's real deal shit. Um, when I'm not into a spring steam, Bruce Spring, but it's that kind of mentality. Like, you know, if, if you know, we all hit certain things of success or whatever, and that's dope. We all want that. Who does it for something that we do? It's our babies. But it's like, yep. we want to be recognized that we grinded for this. Not like, oh, yo, we belong here because we were born here. Nah, it's like we work for everything we do because we, we got to do everything from the ground up. So that's why we want to show people our fucking stripes that what it took to come up. You know, yep. everybody wants to present themselves like um, they're all smooth. I like showing people our scars so they know, you know, we've been through that shit. You know people I mean? like people like us because it's real. Yeah. There's no perpetrating like we're something we're not, you know. And then like people see that shit. You no know, ladies out there for the ladies. I love stretch marks on a lady because that's like a real woman. You know, you <laughs> oh, know your, you your email is gonna blow up right now, dude. Good for you. I'll go kiss <laughs> stretch marks right That's true, bro. 100 percent man. Don't don't pile on the makeup. I like the beauty for what the beauty is, you know. Yo, I got to shout out Hardcore Old School, man. He, he does a great job. On Amazing Instagram. job. Yeah, he does a great <coughs> job keeping this thing moving forward. Love really it. great, great work, man. Love it. Yeah, he does a lot of good stuff. Great. I follow and I love always yeah. keeping me fucking entertained, you know. Finding and yo, if you're going to grab anything off my page, motherfucker, give me credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just learning how to do that whole tagging people. So I'm yeah, guilty yeah. of it too, but I don't do it out of spite. I do it out of being an old man and learning how to. I'm tag people and all that shit. Yo, Toby, I, I remember I snagged something from one of Toby's posts once, and Toby <laughs> called me. He's like, right away, bro, you can't do that. That's fucking my yeah. shit. You got to give me credit. the like, books. What the fuck, bro? Not Dude, a big it deal. to me every day. Yeah, I love it. it. it every it day, I post something on the New York Hardcore Chronicles page or something, and they just swipe it and grab it and, like, there you go. But there whatever. You. But it's a hey, community, man. It's it, yeah, Just don't make hey, money off it. I, yeah. Wait, wait. Somebody, hey, wait, let's go back to this. Somebody, what's, somebody wrote Thomas Starkey. I got sorry, Drew. This is your, you're ahead. the director, but I got to. No, no, go ahead. Go Everyone ahead. Everyone want to be a rock star. That didn't work out on the Bio Comeback album. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I saw Evan at Scotch um, Memorial here in LA. It's good to see him. I almost Evan almost came on the show today. He did. Almost. Yeah, I'm talking to Evan now. Almost. That Evan. that would have been great. He's living in. Tulum, Mexico, I just That's heard. That's right. And and we've been talking and, you know. That's good. Listen, you know, Evan, you know, Evan is a loved person. And all whatever went down, whatever, whatever. But at this point, looking back, you guys influenced so many people. Evan was such a big part of it, man. People, you know. Of course. Was, yeah. It, it's. Don't make me get involved in this, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I just wanted to fucking point out some kids no, talk I, shit. I, I gotta I'm, being, I'm being sarcastic, Evan, bro. I'm being Evan sarcastic. loved Evan loved biohazard to you know, it was in his bones. Yep. He got caught up in the fame and the attention and, and I think it ate at him a little bit. Yep. But he you know, he came back around and he's you know, li he's living in Mexico. He's I saw a couple posts. I talked to Bobby the other day, him and Bobby talked. Um, and he's doing great, so God bless him. And Yo, I, I wish that I'm not my good shit. I put a bullet in. You know what? Yo, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give props here to Evan for a second. He was one in, in a certain way. Different people have different incredible talents, you know, in this in this life and in this world. But he had this incredible talent. And Billy, I know you know this. Is that no matter where what was going on. That guy would put the bass on. We'd be at, at the Donington or Dynamo. And like, he'd be bullshitting with me. We'd be playing dice. We'd be laughing. He'd, he'd nonchalantly put the bass on and turn around and walk out in front of 100,000 people and play an incredible show. He was an incredible showman. I will give him that. 
Shout out to Evan. <laughs> while you, while Billy, you were there stressing out. <laughs> yeah, had Billy playing piano with one hand, guitar yeah. with the other, singing. You know. <laughs> like See, my, you know what? I spent more time fucking running shit. That it, I think it took away a lot of my enjoyment. Yeah. Of it, you know, because yeah. I was busy. Yeah. Nobody gave a fuck. I walked I had into a, a biohazard backstage room one time, and Billy was on the floor counting money, and Evan was in the corner doing something naughty. <laughs> it was doing something on video pop. somewhere, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Hey, let's change the subject. Hey, uh, hey, Hoya, I see this is coming up. What's up with this? Hooligans Holiday? Let's see what other show I'm playing. You tell me, Drew. Oh, yeah, all right. Drum roll, please. Hold on. It's coming up. It's coming up. That's Here my life go. right there. That wrote. Hey, oh, the the, okay, I knew hey, about hey, Hoya. This. Hey, Hoya, by the way, you're playing this show. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, I actually knew about this, but I don't know what day. I'm assuming the last day. But um, this was uh, something that my brother Rico would do in Kansas City that we actually played back in the day. Uh, it was yeah. a, a suited, a suited, a suited uh, affair at the time. But it's a fuck. It really is a good time because Rico really knows his music and he's spinning all soul and just, it's just the vibe gets good. And then he, there's always a good mix of bands and the vibe is always good. And it's going to be a good time, man. This is going to be like a good weekend to like, you know, plan the weekend around. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're playing with powerhouse on Sunday, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's going to, Oh, Sunday we're playing. Okay, oh, so that's right. That's, that's what Walter's talking about. The last day you're playing with powerhouse. Yeah. So we're doing, I think Philadelphia in this show. So, um, yeah, I forgot we had this, but, um, yeah, man, again, upstate, you know, they're trying to make it happen and they and hopefully everything goes smooth and we could, you know, we could all go out and fucking make some noise with everybody. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I'm psyched, man. I'm psyched. What, what else I got in store, Drew? <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I got so far, man. All right, no, I got, I want to shout out, I want to shout out the band Cropsy. They're playing, uh, the next. Uh, all ages free matinee with Fahrenheit 451 reunion. I shout know I mentioned it before, but yo, yeah, shout out to Fahrenheit. I uh, want to shout out Cropsy, everybody in Cropsy. Uh, welcome to our A7 family. We're looking forward to the show coming up uh, three weeks from today. If it's going to happen, man, you know, New York's kind of a crazy place right now. Very crazy. Yeah, it, it's kind of a, it's it's kind of a drag. Um, that said, um, what else? Well, good. There you go. Yeah, no, it was good to see you, man. I'm glad, man. I'm glad everything is good out west, man. Hopefully, I can see you in, in real life. Fuck yeah, soon, man. Soon. I think it's 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 like it's the darkness before the fucking sunrise here. I think it's, it's the last one. Who knows? We said that about Delta. Yeah, New York's New York's ugly right now, man. It's it's really bad up here. You know, this, yeah. Florida. Let me just say this for everybody: Florida is beautiful. So. Yep. Come to me. <laughs> How's things out there, Billy? LA's great, man. It's cool. I got a lot of people that, you know, they get sick, but it's fucking over in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. going to become a fucking cold. That's what it is. Yeah. Basically, people forget that we get colds too. But anyway, that's another story. Darren says, Billy, you should come over to the UK again. Please come to Wales as I'd like to have a beer with you. Oh, that's a good, good reason. To Fuck yeah. To come to, I got actually. I'm I'm working with a band from Leeds, so uh, once this shit opens up, I'm going to be in Leeds. So shout out to Davy Jones. Throw away. He's well yep. Shaney. Davy Jones. Davy Jones from. He's well. He's from, well Shaney. Oh, is he? Davey? No, the, yeah, yeah, not Davy Jones from the Monkeys. The other guy, uh, Jones. What's his name? Um, um, uh, the what? Yeah, what's his name? Um, um, the old the the Playboy guy, the white guy. From the seventies, the all the women threw panties at him. Oh, um, he, he Jones. Fucking, uh, no, no, Davy Jones a, sang for the monkeys. Babe. Yeah, not that Davy Jones. The other Joe, the other guy, beautiful to me, love yeah. like this. Tom Jones. Tom, Tom Jones. Jones. Yo, you know Doyle from the Misfits. His favorite artist, musical artist, Tom, Tom Jones. Jones. Well, yeah. Tom Jones is Welsh, by the way. So yeah, he is. I thought yeah. he's American. I no. thought so too. I was wrong. Wow. Yeah, that's Doyle's favorite musical artist. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but he's dope, man. He mad panties thrown at him. 
Well, listen, you know, <laughs> you know that was. He's immune. Uh, he's immune to all these diseases. Just those panty, that panty stuff all on them. Forget. Oh, Cropsy, Cropsy's playing that show with uh, <laughs> with Madball as well up there in New York. Oh, shout okay. out to Cropsy. There you go. See, listen, <laughs> Thank oh, yeah, you. If you ever need to know what's going on with the band. Tune into the Hardcore Chronicles. They'll let you know what, what your band is playing. Yo, shouting out the take. Yeah. Shout out to the take, fucking Dick Shepler. I love oh, you, everybody. That's great. All right, hey, Billy, anybody you want to shout out? Nah. Nah. <laughs> fuck it, fuck you know, I, yeah, out. you know, I, I want to shout out Roger. I didn't see him, um, but that dude's fucking survived the fucking wrath of fucking battles. So, Roger, God love you, bro. Yeah. Keep kicking ass, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. All right, Billy. We'll be in touch. I'll talk to you soon. Peace All out, right, guys. Talk. Happy New Year, guys. Good to see Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year to you and your family. Later, guys. Oh, yeah. All right. See you. Yeah, we love that guy, bro. Yeah, the best. Yeah. The best. Yeah. So, you Shout know. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. I'm just, I am can't. I don't want to be answering while they're talking, but I see I see your messages. I see you motherfuckers talking yeah, shit. The chat, yeah, let's see. Maruzio says, great, great show tonight. Good night for all in Italy. Italy, I love you, Italy. Tom Jones, well, let me see. Let me tell Tom. Yo, they love Mad Ball in Italy, huh? Who else? Um, uh, uh, Sex Bomb, he's from Wales. Yeah, exactly. Chris Andrews. We see you out there. We see you. Um, Kevin Haggerty, you know what's up. Hags, what's up? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We out here. We see you what's crack a You know what, man? I'm not going to sleep until this biohazard thing gets sorted out, bro. I'm telling yeah, you. I, I think like... it's, I could, I think in the, I think there's, um, there's a uh, hope in the horizon. You know what I'm saying? Don't make me get involved in this shit, bro. But because I will, you yeah, know. Yeah, so no, I'm, I, I'm just. <laughs> you know, I think um, the lack of music makes people want to do music more. You know what I mean? So Belfast, shout out to all my Belfast people. Let me tell you, shout out to Belfast has had some hardcore shit. Belfast, Ireland, Belfast is hardcore, yo. Listen, a, a quick story. When we first played Dublin in the early 90s, we were supposed to play Belfast in, in Dublin. And the Belfast show got canceled because um, there was cars being blown up still in the streets, whatever, whatever. But a bunch of the crew from Belfast came down to Dublin. And I never forget them. They always came down to Matt, just how they were and how grateful. And they were like, dude, yo, you hope, uh, we wish you guys could come to Belfast. But right now, there's shit blowing up in the streets. But... Belfast loves New York hardcore. And we've been back since, but shout out to the fucking Dublin. Chris um, Andrews Belfast says, yo, I met Irish. Chris Andrews says, I met you there, Hoy, in Belfast in 2018. Boom. There you go. That's one of the later ones. Yo, shout out to all you um, again. Um, a lot of love out there. You know, we even got to play in Ireland. We got to play Cork. We played Dublin, you know. Um, we got, you know, we've been around a little bit uh, with, with the Irish, you know, shout out to the Irish. We New York, you know, New York is Irish and Dutch. There you, you go. Know? Frank and Nichols then, says, when, Fred, Frank Nichols says, when's the new Madball album coming out? Um, You guys, to ask Drew, he, you know, he knows my shows. He'll know when that. Oh, oh, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Funny you should ask about the new Madball record. Right now, Madball is currently writing and getting ready to demo out all the great new material with their fantastic new guitar player who will be on the show and yeah, exactly. We're working on a right, yo, Estra Hoffman. Shout out to Rosie. I, I remember that club with Rikers. But um, yeah, we you know we've been working on a new album, but we took a little bit break of a break. Yo, Estra Hoffman, that's a classic spot we used to play. I remember that with but, Rikers. Uh, yeah, um, um, we're working on an album, and hopefully, you know, um, you know, when we're able to play it, we uh, you know, we don't want to put something out and not be able to support it. So hopefully, when shit gets ironed out. You know, we'll be in your backyards. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, of course, uh, need Madball back out on Long Island ASAP. One love. Always. You know, Long Island. That's our second home. You know, Long Island is home. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I've been a court. Listen, I've been to more Irish spots than most freaking New York Irish people been. So look at I got. They would call me a black uh, a black Irish, I think. <laughs> you're, you're like you're like dude from uh no, you're like dude from Thin Lizzy. You like, yeah, that, like that you're like that black Irish I, dude. I'm an imported, imported <laughs> Irish. Top of the morning to you. Uh, uh, Shout out to my Irish. Uh, Rick says, I love you guys. Great show. Real quick, Hoya, what's the best kind of fish? The best kind of fish, you know what kind of no, <laughs> 
salmon and and uh, uh, um, corvina and in Spanish corvina. I don't know what it is, but those are my two favorite fishes out there. You still smoking yeah. weed out of apples? Old school, baby. Listen, blood clot ain't the only guy on that green shit. I ain't new to this, everybody. Shout out to Toby, blood clot, grass, fucking trees. <laughs> Who else we got in there? Ball of Destruction, AJ Bender, you know what's up. Hobo oh, Cakes. Dude. That's a good name, Hobo Cakes. Hobo Tom Jones cakes. is the man. There's now, some I'm good names. Dar what is that? Darren Diggle. Oh, I thought it would have been Darren Dingleberry. That would have been better. <laughs> I'm looking Two back. Fish. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm well, looking back a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, what do we got? Yeah, I love AJ it. Bender says Madball's supposed to be coming to Columbia, South Carolina in January, right? Listen, let me let me handle this, bro. Let me handle this. Bro, if you think that Madball is coming down to Columbia, South Carolina in a couple weeks, man, you better let go. You better let that fart out, kid. Thank you. <laughs> and there you go. To be honest with you, my man, I don't know what we're doing, but everything that Drew put up. I think we're doing those. So yeah. um, we'll, we'll rock with that for now. I really don't know what's going on because, again, things are coming in real time. I guess, you know, uh, you know, even with the shows, we're taking things as slow as possible. But, yeah, everybody, I know you guys got a lot of European guys. This is for my European hardcore family. Um, This is my web store. My, my brother Theo runs it. This is in-house, you know what I mean? This ain't like another company that does it. This is, you know, Madball family right here. So they do the international stuff. Oh, this this is the Europe. This is, this is, your, okay, yes. so the, I got it. Yeah, yeah, but the EU is my brother Theo. So it is, it's me and him. And it's not like, you right. know, a license to a company, you know, this is yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fam. But the cost of the rock dot com is just America because again, the. The, I, I don't want to be charging uh, um, crazy yeah. numbers on the on the international, but soon, everybody. But thank you to everybody who's been supporting me, especially the Patreon family. I want to say something quick about the Patreon to everybody listening. Patreon lets us get creative with our thing, meaning like it helps us do all the extra stuff on our podcast, on this on the spot type of thing. So that's where that shit comes into handy because people want to wonder well, like where this goes. Well, the millions that me and Drew get, the millions and millions. <laughs> exactly. No, but on the real, it helps us invest in the show and do all this other cool shit and make shit happen, you know, and not have to worry about it because, you know, um, and because of the Patreon, it helps the, the, the whole thing move. You know what I mean? So shout out to all the Patreons, man. That's taking support to the next level. You know what I mean? So, Speaking of which, I want to shout out Al Mitchell from Circus of Power. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite New York, you know, rock bands. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, he sang oh, for dude. Crucial Truth before then. Coming from real old school New York hardcore roots, Al Mitchell. Uh, oh, here's a, just want to throw up my Patreon there. I know I got a lot of people, you know, I feel I'm superstitious. I feel like if I don't put it up, like I put it up every show. So I got to, I got to throw it up there a second. And everybody who, everybody who is, on my my Patreon page, all my patrons get this book for free. This cool. is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, volume volume one, 1980 to 1989. No. Um, it's a it's a, a great all the flyers from a flyer perspective from a lot of people and a bunch of people that aren't with us. You hear from Todd Youth in this book, Jack Flanagan, Kenny Aaron's uh, the original singer for uh, Urban Waste, God Rest His Soul. If you're interested in buying the book uh, and you're not a patron, here is the here is the link. It's available at www.stonefilmsnyc.com. So don't be shy, you know, buy the book. You know, yeah, I got oh, mine. Yeah. Incredible walk to it. Yo, send me your address. I'll send you a book. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, again, Patreon. Shout out to you guys for, for making it and everybody supporting and for uh, you can uh, everybody who's on my Instagram, you can hit my Patreon. It's on the, the links on there. If anybody you know wants to support there, or just you know when you see a post, even forwarding the post is a big support to all our avenue. You know what I mean to everybody's stuff. So if you can't do something financially, just you putting um a repost, that's helping the whole the whole movement. You know move, and that's what we need. We need everybody to be a. Uh, a spoke in the wheel, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, you can order the book in Europe. Uh, Cortex has it. Um, I don't know if the link is up 
today because it's a holiday, but I just shipped them a whole bunch. Uh, Cor- you Shout out to Cortex. Yeah, shout out to Cortex, who does a lot for us. Um, hey, Larry, yeah. yo. Look at that. Look at that. That's that Casa de Rock. Yo, yo was, that, was that your phone blowing up that you just got a new patron? You was know, that- it might is, be. It may yeah, not. Nigga. <laughs> I can tell you this. I can tell you this. You see this? That shit is printed by your boy in-house, baby. Well, you know, when you get a package from us, these dirty mugs most likely was all up on your shit. So Larry Kelly just jumped on your Patreon, bro. See? Yo, shout out. Yo, thank you to everybody who supports. And the same thing I even say. You don't want to support me, you support Drew. You support Isaac. You support um, the, uh, the Post America. As long as you're supporting somebody in the trenches, I got your back. Cool. Good. All right. What do you say we go have some dinner, huh? Yeah. I think, so. <laughs> I think my I think my children should eat, maybe. They deserve it. Yeah, to. what is it? It's, I guess. But hey, that was a lot of fun. We gotta do it again, man. Absolutely. We're gonna do some um smoking word mashup also with you, Drew. We're yeah. gonna talk about maybe doing some special things in the next month to come, like we talked behind the scenes. But um, yo, shout out to everybody. I'm glad you invited me on to do this. It was great. Um uh I, I, you know, this is perfect. I, it was good to see everybody. I was glad to see Roger. To be honest with you, that's my highlight right there because uh, that's my big brother. And yep. we do all the, you know, same thing with you. You know, you're some of the guys. This is why we get to do this. So shout out to all you. Shout out to all the OGs that are still in the mix, feeding and growing with us. So it was great. Let's keep in touch. And uh, I'll talk, have a happy new year. You, 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 too, man. you, you everybody you out there. We love you. Casa the rock.com. Smoke your word podcast. New York Hardcore Chronicles. We love you. And we out. I'll talk to you soon. Peace out. Well, there you have it. This was the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. My co-host today was uh, Hoya Rock. What are you doing, bro? I have been, I haven't left this spot. <laughs> this has been such a good show. It was crazy. It really has. It's such a, this is, this one could have kept going. Everyone was great. This is really a terrific show. I, I like having a co-host, you know? Well, you guys, that's great chemistry there, you know? And, and uh, excellent. Yeah. In fact, I, uh, I got to say, while I, I was left alone, I didn't have a Christmas because I'm six days into quarantine. So I had to spend a little money. I went, I, I went over to Casa de Rock. Nice. Boom. And I bought a few things. So uh, AJ Bender's asking any shows going on anywhere New Year's Eve or the night before. Yo, New York is in chaos right now. Um, it, it, Murphy's Law is playing New Year's Eve, right? Yeah, at the Kingsland. At Kingsland. There you go. Yeah. With, Murphy's, uh, Law, with the- Murphy's Law is playing New Year's Eve. You know, hey, Debo, shouting out Debo to Pro up at New York Hardcore Comics. Thank Debo. you so much for your support, Debo, man. Seriously. What's up, the governor? Frankie Too Far. What's going on? Frankie Too Far is DJing this show. We are excited. We are excited about this. Uh, Sunday, February 6th. All ages hardcore matinees are back on the Bowery featuring the governor, a.k.a. Frankie Too Far. He will be. Yes. There you go. It is Sub-Zero, The High and the Mighty. We're doing a reunion. Zum is playing with us on guitar. Murderer's Road, Dark Side, MYHC, and Skitopolis. Get your shoes and socks on, kids. It's right around the corner. So that's, that is a good one. Hey, do you know what's happening? You know what's coming up on the next show? What do we got? The next show is, is this. Is Charlie Benante George. Yes. We're I gotta watch a bigger boat. That's, that's a week from today. Yo, everybody got everybody has to watch the uh, has to watch Jaws again in lieu of this show. This is a Do week your homework, from, people. A week from today. Everybody's yeah. gotta everybody's gotta watch Jaws again. I know I'm going to. He apparently know? owns that tank you see with him there. Yeah, that's he does. from his personal collection. Hey, you know, I, I know a lot of people are asking about my about about um, Evan Seinfeld and and that I had a, you know uh, had a conversation with him and all that. Yeah, I'm talking to Evan these days. Evan's doing well. Uh, he almost came on the show today, but 
I think eventually, hopefully, he will come on, and uh, we have nothing but love for that guy. So that would be amazing. Yeah, we'll we'll get there, man. We'll get there. He has some new music. He's in the studio, and uh, you know, stranger things have happened. You know, a stranger things have happened. So, all right, that's it. You want to shout anybody out before the new year? You know what? I want to shout out the governor. We got to get the governor on as a guest photographer one of these days. Yeah, we do. I, I'm a big. I'm a big. He's a he's a renaissance man. He's a DJ. He's a photographer. He's a musician. Talking about, talking about doing a uh, maybe step too far reunion one of these days. I told him just let me know. You know? Yes. Just let me. Yeah, know. bring it to Barry Electric. Of course. Where else? <laughs> All right. Hey, yes. I'll talk. I'll talk to you soon. Everybody, take care. Happy New Year. Okay. Well, there you go. Great show today. Uh, loved it. And uh, thanks so much for, for chiming in in the chat room. It was awesome. It's great having, yeah, 30th anniversary. Exactly. You let me know. You let me know. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, we're gearing up. We're gearing up to do this. Rampage Mosh Fest is, is, uh, Sunday, April 3rd. So we're starting to put this together now. There you go. Rampage Mosh Fest 3. Rampage Fest 3. It's going down. That said, once again, thanks a lot, everybody. Have a happy new year. All the best to you and your family. We will see you a week from today with Charlie Benante and the Jaws Show. Until then, do good things, and good things will come to you.